Guys, welcome back to Impractically Practical. Today, today, guys, it's going to be a special one. We have a guy here. I don't think he needs any introduction, but his name is Alejandro Aguilar. How's it going, bro? I'm doing good, bro. How about yourself? I'm doing good, man. Can't complain. We're out here finally getting you in, right? Absolutely. Very, very special guest here, guys. So Appreciate it. So excited. I'm sure everybody knows who you are, right? But for those who don't, uh, what, what, what do you do, man? Where do you... Where do you well, how do people know you out here, bro? Um, well, if you guys know me, you guys know I do insurance. I'm one of the guys who started kind of pretty much PHP here in Bakersfield. Um, but I'll tell you a little bit more as far as like how I ended up in that position first, because, you know, I, I think that what we do in our life today, nowadays, when we do our life, who we are as individuals, it all has to do with our programming, right? From what we saw when we were kids. And um, guys, my dad's from Mexico, Michoacan, right? My dad's a little short, little dark, five foot two, five foot three, little Mexican, right? And um, my ba I originally grew up in Lamont, and I remember my dad when uh, when we actually uh, when we were kids, my dad was real strict, very very strict. When me and Ricky, my older brother Ricky Aguilar, if you guys know who he is, yeah, we were not allowed to have friends. So my dad says, "I'm your friend, right? We're not allowed to have friends because he didn't want us to have like bad influence and stuff like that." Little did he not, know that, not knowing you were the bad influence. Yeah, I really exactly <laughs> right. So then, uh, so but my dad, you know, he was real interesting because even though he was short, dark, chaparro, you know, and he's Fifty Shades of Dark. My dad, my dad, bro, he always said one thing. He says, Mira, mijo, I, I jumped the border. I came to America. You know what I mean? And he's like, and I, I didn't speak English. I had no papers. I left my mom. I left my family. I left my culture. I left my food. I left everything that I know. And he's like, and Mexico's beautiful. I left that for a better opportunity. He goes, it's a damn shame when us Mexicans, immigrants have babies here and have children here. And those kids grow up and they do nothing with their life. It's dishonorable, it's disappointing, and it's a shame. He says, so you're born in this country with two languages. You speak English and Spanish, and you have papers. You have no excuse not to make something with your life. I'm like, dad, chill. I'm five years old, right? <laughs> but, bro, that was like my dad's conversation at a young age, you know? And I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I got to do something, right? So my dad, my, the funny thing is, like, if in Hakalito, there was a restaurant called Hakalito years ago in, La in Lamont. And if I'm mistaken, you're from what? Arvin. Arvin. Arvin, Arvin born poor right. side, right? <laughs> and so, yeah, bro. So I'm over here like a little lobster, right, Lamont. And so then, uh, so then, uh, you know, my dad opened up a restaurant. My dad was, a, I don't know if you guys know this, but the first Mexican restaurant that was established by a paisano. Like, for example, let's just say us, we're born here, right? And we opened up a Mexican restaurant. There was already plenty of Mexican restaurants in Kern County like that, okay? But my dad was the first paisa with no papers, no English, to open up an actual Mexican restaurant. He did it. And so when he opened up his restaurant, guys, you know, he had a restaurant dealership. He eventually got papers, you know, he got into the real estate industry as well. And so I'm growing up watching my dad just hustle, bro. Hustle, hustle. My parents were divorced when I was like five. So my dad used to, the cool part is that he used to, we used to go to Mexico twice a year. We're from Michoacan, right? From La Eme, just so you guys know Michoacan. And, uh, <laughs> and so then uh, we used to go to Mexico and he used to do three things, man. He used to pray. Uh, we, we, he used to pray. And number two, he used to put money in our socks just in case we got jacked. And then three, he used to say, son, if something happens to me, I have life insurance. So he used to always say that to me all the time. And so it's me, my brother, Ricky, and just my dad. We used to drive out to Mexico. It's a three-day drive. And, you know, we don't have iPads at the time. You know, there's no, it was back in the 90s, guys. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, I'm four years old, 1994. And, and so my, my dad would say, you see that man over there? And we'd be driving, right? He's like, if that man can do it, you could do it faster and better. He's like, you see that man over there? Like, if that guy can do it, you could do it faster and better. I'm like, okay. All I got to do is I got to be work faster and be better, right? So I'm growing up thinking like, okay, I got to be my own boss. He's like, mijo, do you ever see me call somebody a boss? He's like, no, I'm the boss. You understand me? I'm like, okay, dad. He's like, so when you guys get older, you have to be the boss. This is why we can go to Six Flags. This is why we can go to Mexico. This is why we can go to Puerto Vallarta. And yeah, bro, you took us to Puerto Vallarta, Huatulco, Acapulco, and everywhere. You know, Oaxaca. And we've been to Mexico, Def, and the Pyramid side. I've been to everywhere part of Mexico. So I saw my culture. I saw my roots. That's why I'm a proud Hispanic. Because I got to explore Manzanillo, you know, I got to explore uh, uh, the the beautiful culture of, of Guanajuato. You get me? So, so you have a five foot four, short little dark immigrant Mexican who came to America with nothing, has gets married here, has kids here, and now he gives us his life that says this is what happens when you're your own boss. But the challenge here, though, is that when you go to school and you have D's and F's. 
and generate classes, you know what the hell that does to a person's and, and, and like a like you know what that does to your self esteem. You know what that does to your identity when you see that the teachers call you dumb, right? And the and then you get bullied by your friends and your family's like, oh, this guy has bad grades. So they literally label who you are. They program it, and you have to remember psychologically, the human brain is being wired from age four years old to 17 years old. What it sees and what it experienced from those age brackets, it's what makes somebody an adult. So for example, let's say I see a, a woman and uh, a girl sees her, her mom get beat by the husband all the time. And the mom never leaves the husband. Like, no, it's because, you know, for whatever reason, it's que lo quiero y tu papá si es, whatever the excuse bullcrap is. And she sees that. When she gets older and she starts dating a guy and the guy, let's say her boyfriend happens to put hands on her, in her head, subconsciously, she's thinking, uh, uh, you know, this is bad, but her, her, sorry, her subconscious thinking, this is love. Consciously, she it's knows normal. it's bad. It's normal. Her subconscious is saying what? This is love. So what do, what do human beings actually follow? Do we follow our conscious mind or our subconscious? What do you think makes decisions for us? Subconscious. The subconscious mind is the most dominant conscious that there is, is the subconscious mind, not the conscious mind. So if you go to school thinking like, yo, you're these and that, generate classes, and you're, and you're called stupid your whole life, bro, that creates insecurity and low self-esteem. And you know what comes after low self-esteem and insecurity? Depression. And you know what causes depression as well? What comes after depression? Anxiety. So I'm dealing with all this crap when I'm a freaking kid from age five years old to age 17 that I can remember going to school. You know what I mean? And, and the thing is like, yo, that really, that really screwed me up. Because I'm thinking, okay, I'm born in America. I have two languages. I speak English. I have papers. You know, I'm taller than my dad. And my dad's like, yo, you better become somebody. I'm like, but I'm dumb as hell. So how the hell does this work? Because I'm told to go to school, have good grades and get a good job. And that's how you become successful in America. So imagine the identity crisis I had to thinking, yo, your dad is a boss with no papers and no English. You're born here, but you're dumb because school tells you you're dumb. Where do I go from there? So... You know, what the only thing I had to my favor, guys, is I was I was a good ass worker. I was a hard ass worker. So on on you mentioned the uh, divorce, right? You said yeah. your your parents got divorced at five years old. Yeah, I was four or five. How 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 impactful was that for you? Uh you know what, bro? I remember the day they told me they got divorced. And I got I think I got used to it because my parents got got divorced when I was a young age. So I I, I grew up in two different homes and I saw I saw I saw my mom be a waitress at a, a restaurant called Red Pepper, which is delicious, by the way, right there on Oswald. And um, and I saw my mom struggle being a waitress. And the only place my mom could take me, and she's an amazing mom. I love my mom. Her name's Angelica. She took us to uh, uh, Rollerama. And that's the only place she could take us is Rollerama in Skateland right here in Bakersfield. And uh, I remember when I'm like, mom, can you take us this Friday? Mom, can you take us this Saturday? And those are the most busiest days in the restaurant. Okay. She's like, let me call my coworker and see if she could take a shift. And I would see her, right, on the phone on the wall. Because, you know, those ones back then, there was not a lot of cell phones. So she yeah. was on the phone on the wall. She's like, please, I'll, I'll take your shift on Tuesday night. And they're trying to negotiate. And then she's like, and all I have to see is after like an hour or so, I would look at her face. And she said, if her face was happy, that means it was go time. We can go to Skateland. But then I went with the dad who was an entrepreneur. And I saw, oh, by the way, I saw my mom struggle. I remember one time I was going to go buy ice cream. And I would, I loved ice cream, by the way. That's my freaking I loved, ice cream for me. We have a, like a serious relationship issues because I'm <laughs> addicted to it, right? And then, uh, and so I would save up. And I would have to hide my money from Ricky because if I had the money, Ricky would grab my money and go buy ice cream as well, do some other crap with my money when we were kids. <laughs> or I would have to hide all my things from my brother, right? So then uh, I remember I saved up like five bucks and quarters and nickels and dimes, you know what I mean? And I was like, I'm going to buy five ice creams this time. And um, my mom, I, I remember seeing papers on the ground. We're in Lamont, right? We're living in Lamont. I see a, a calculator. I see money. And I see, like, bills. And I'm five, six years old, bro. And I see her hands like this, like she's covering her face. And I'm watching her. And I'm like, I'm waiting for the ice cream truck, bro. And I'm like, and I look at her and I feel so bad because I see her crying. And I go take her the, I go take her my, my jar of money. I said, here, mom. And she looks at the money. She starts crying, but she took the money. I mean, what mom takes her kids' savings? <laughs> but she took it because what does that tell you? That she it was it was she needed it. Yep. And at that moment, at that moment, bro, I made a decision. I said, I'm gonna be somebody. I was five years old. I said, I'm gonna take care of your mom. I'm gonna bust my ass. I'm gonna do whatever I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna take care of your mom. So my expectation to win in life was built by seeing a mom struggle. But then on the other side, I might have saw my dad having new cars every two years. And my dad, my my dad took care of my mom too, but you know what I mean? Like 
even though they were divorced, my dad was a really good dad. He took care of my mom too. But my mom was like, I don't need your child support. Just do whatever you want for the kids. Mm -hmm. I don't need your child support. But my dad still, he did his part. You know what I mean? He, 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 he took care of us. He took his travel. He bought his clothes. But my mom, my mom, you know, she, she didn't depend on my dad. So I saw the hurt of being an employee. And I saw the, vic the, the life of an entrepreneur. And I, I lived both sides. Bro. Now, did you always witness the success as your dad, uh, from, from your dad's entrepreneurship? I saw the hustle. I you saw you the didn't grind. see you didn't see any of the uh, like failures or stuff like that. I, you know the thing is like you're too young to uh, respect or appreciate failures. You know you don't know that there's struggle, right? Because my dad like my dad would always take us to different. I know my dad had struggles because shoot, bro, he got rid of the dealership. He got rid of the Jalacalito. He got into he got into the uh, car industry called Aguilar Juice Cars in Lamont. Then he got into real estate, and then real estate crashed. So. Also, my dad took off to Mexico when I was like 12 years old to go live out there. So it's kind of like the most crucial time in my life, bro. I didn't really see my pops. Like, I didn't really see my dad uh, as much because he lived in a different country. And uh, that was that was probably the most hurtful thing that can happen was uh, my dad taking off, bro. And it took me very many, many years to cope with it. See, if it would have been different, my dad was like a bad dad. But he was a phenomenal dad. So him taking off really tore me apart and just crushed me. So I, I can't, I did see his failures, but I wasn't there to witness it. But I just saw my dad grind. If the only thing I could pick up from my mom and my dad is that they were crazy ass workers, bro. Now, did you also maybe not not realize them because he kind of kept them to himself? You know what? Possibly, possibly, yeah. Because my dad was very stoic. Like if there was challenges, I think the thing is like when you're when you're not he was already an entrepreneur for years before I got in the picture. So I think that you guys know how it is, man. Like in the beginning when you're barely trying to come up and you're trying to become successful. Like, let's say right now we have a, we work at, I don't know, in and out and we make two grand a month, $2,500 a month. Cool. Well, we are struggling with $2,500 problems, right? But then let's just say you start making $6,000 a month in whatever other industry, then you start slaying $6,000 issues. And if you don't slay those $6,000 issues, you're stuck going back to those 2,500 bucks. Yep. So I think that my, like, as we got, as we became more successful, as we got older, us right here, you and me, all of us. I think that we've slayed bigger dragons. So I think that my dad's mentality was like, okay, I'm going through some crap, but this is nothing. We're going to overcome it. Well, I think generally that's what the successful entrepreneur learns how to do, right? Is, is kind of take those challenges and, and, and not necessarily look at them as a bad thing. Like right. it's just part of business, right? right. Um, versus a, a brand new entrepreneur really getting into the business. They, they, I think when you see the bigger picture, especially being that your dad had already been in business for so long, but like a starting entrepreneur, when you when you when you see the bigger picture and you don't focus so much on how hard the process is going to be, little bumps on the road don't seem so big. Don't right. Because you know. you're just you're chasing that one that you're chasing the light at the end of the tunnel. Right. Versus if you're just thinking like I need to make 100 grand this year or 200 grand. Once something gets hard, it's like shit. I'm not going to make it. Let me just go back to my nine to five. Right. Do you do you think as well that look, OK, let me ask you a question then. How did you build your, how did, how did you start believing? Like you have an office here, you have your business, you know, you got into like the, the industry of real estate, as far as like being a lender, you know, if you, you're in sales, how the hell do we go from, because prior to that, I remember bro, before you were doing any of that, you were, I think in a group, if I'm not mistaken, you yeah. have music. Yep. Okay. How the hell did you build a character to say, you know what? I'm going to go out there. I'm a freaking stop doing what I'm doing. That I've been doing for all these years. And, and I'm going to go out there and build something. I think, how do you think you, you got to that position? Well, to be honest with you, it's funny that you bring that up because I just had my godfather come from Mexico and he was here yesterday and he walks into my house. He'd never been to my house and uh, I don't live in the rich side of town, but I, you know, I have a decent home and uh, he walks in and he's just, you know, looking around and goes to the backyard and sees my backyard and he looks at me. He's like, Hey, hijo, tu cambiaste, uh, what do you say? La pasión por el dinero, verdad? And I start, we start cracking up, right? But he was saying wow. it as a joke. He was saying yeah. it as a joke. He's like, and then we start, but we start both cracking up. And I was like, no, nah, dinero, you know, typical yeah. answer. Um, and he's like, no, seriously though, like I can see why you left music. And, and I was like, well, it's, it's easy to take that perspective, right? Like I, I just, but it, like, oh, he, he doesn't love what he does, but now he's making money. I mean, think that all you want, but if you're making money, you're fucking happy. You know yeah. I mean? Yeah. Most, most people will say money yeah. can't buy happiness. Uh, I mean, it can't solve your problems. It can't bring you back to life from the dead, but you're pretty fucking happy when you have money. Yeah. And so I'm not trying to say I'm, oh my God, I'm the richest person ever. But what I'm getting at though, is that you asked me a question on why did I leave music, right? In a sense I, I'm of, asking how the hell did you have the confidence oh, to okay. become the person? Like, 
this is this is why I'm I'm, I'm kind of playing like devil's advocate here. Don't you agree that you have to go through some crap in your life sure. to say like I okay, this issue happened. I freaking worked my ass out of this position. I I got punched in the face. I got kicked to the ground, and I'm still standing. So now, if you're gonna go to another challenge or another fight, do you have confidence in yourself? Well, the bit, the easiest way to build confidence is getting knocked on your fucking ass and being broke. Okay, <laughs> does that make sense? Like when you slay those two, like when you get up from a good ass kicking in life, and you get up, and you say, huh, "Okay, this this position, this chapter, this chapter in my life kicked my ass. I'm still here standing, and I'm still moving forward. What's next?" For sure. That you slayed it. And now you can get bigger ones. Right? You get bigger, you get bigger challenges, and the bigger challenges you overcome, they're more painful, they're heavier, they hurt more, they take your sleep a little bit more, they take everything from you, every ounce of energy from you, and you slay that dragon in one way or another, you make it happen. You're gonna tell me you're not gonna freaking succeed over other challenges and other challenges? Yes, because you get stronger and better. Now, on, on that same topic, I, I have a question for you and I want your opinion. So obviously throughout these years, right, you've been building character, you've been able to take punches and every time the punch can get harder and you can take every it better, time. right? And so you're learning how to get up from harder and harder punches in life. Right. You, you're calling them dragons. The dragon gets bigger every time. Right. Right. Now, I have I have in, in our listeners young people, mm -hmm. 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, that, that are thinking like, okay, you preach about starting businesses. You preach about entrepreneurship and not following the rat race, the traditional route. Yeah. What do I do? How do I find my calling, right? What's your advice for someone at that age to, to know kind of how to build that character without, without being too desperate and wanting the, the, the success tomorrow? See, and I, I've always had a, a, a challenge with that question. Let me tell you why I've always had a challenge with that question. Because you hear like all these millionaires you have to chase your passion okay you know and i i feel it right you got to chase your passion but i was got i was brought up in an environment where you did things you hated doing because i huevo lo tenías que hacer you feel me like i grew up with a dad that oh do i gotta tell you twice no okay how many times do i gotta tell you one time okay if you do it if you don't if you don't do it, i'm gonna I'm whoop on you does that make sense like yeah. my mom was like i'm your mom and i said so do it now so i grew up in an environment where you gotta do the things you hate doing regardless does that make sense? For sure. And when you do it, do it, you better do it right too. You better do it right. And you better do it right the first time. If not, you're going to have to go back and do it again. And so I have a hard time with that because I hated the rigs. After high school, or, or two, I graduated high school in 2008, the economy crashes. Everybody's losing everything. My mom and my stepdad, they got married when I was like 10, 11 years old, which is very tough. They, you know, another man in my life now. And this guy's all of a sudden in charge of our household. And I don't even know this dude very much. You know, so... That after they had a business and everything, they lost everything, bro. I saw my mom and my even my dad, they lost everything in 2008. We went from traveling to Mexico all the time, living well to like, yo, my mom goes back to being a waitress at a restaurant after having a business that was paying her a quarter million dollars a year. My stepdad's in depression in a room in, in bed. And he's like my whole entire childhood when he was I was 18, those eight years of him being in my life, I never saw him be in a room depressed that he didn't want to get up in the mornings. I see my dad stressing in Mexico and he's not coming back for months because there's no money to come back in America too. And I just, and I'm like, I gotta go work, bro. I gotta go do something. So I go work in the oil rigs and I'm getting my ass kicked there. And you know what, bro? I hated the oil fields. I hated the rigs. You know what I mean? Like I, I absolutely hated it. And I, I hated the oil fields. Give me one second. Yeah, I, I hated the oil fields. And, and I would say, I will say this, even though I hated the oil fields, bro, I was good at it. And if you can bring any supervisor, any pusher, anything out there, I was good in the damn rigs. And I was proud of the fact that even though these guys bullied me and they punked me and they did, bro, I got bullied nasty in the rigs because, bro, it's me and my older brother, Ricky. I'm the youngest. And you know what happens when you're the youngest? You get a little bit more baby from your parents. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when you're the youngest, you get like, oh, I thought you get and the older brother can protect you. And you know what I mean? Like the bullies, who do you think, mess, who do you think will go fight there and fight my bullies? My brother did. So when I go to the rigs, bro, and I go to reality and I have to, my ass has to be up at 3.45 in the morning, be on location by 5 a.m., and I'm getting drilled by these grown ass men. And if I don't go do this work, I'm gonna go back and flip burgers. Does that make sense? Like it's either this or go work. And I remember Jose, a guy named Jose Chacon, he grabbed me and he slammed me my third month into the rigs. I'm like, at this point, bro, I'm like almost crying of how much 
They mistreated me one day and he grabs me and slams me to the rigs and says, listen, this is a dog eat dog world. You understand me? There's no feelings. There's no emotions here. There's a, a, a guy, uh, I'm not going to say his name because for me, he's still a punk. But the, the point is they asked him like, hey, where do you leave your feelings at? Another, the rig hands. He says, you leave that shit at home. Right. And, and I remember that moment saying like, when you come to work, when you go get the job done, why am I doing it? Well, one, because my family's broke. Two, I got to pay bills, bro. Three, I want to smell good. Four, I want to drive a nice car. I want to have food. I don't want to be broke. I want to live in a safe place. So I'm going to freaking work on these rigs and I'm going to do a good damn job at it. So how do I find my passion? Primero, whatever the hell you do, you better be the best at it. Now, on, on that same, on that topic, um, and something that I want to bring up since, since earlier, you kind of answered my question, but correct me if I'm wrong. So the reason that you went to the rigs in the first place was because your the, the businesses had fallen. You kind of had no choice, right? You had to go to work. Now, the reason I asked that is because you mentioned you you saw entrepreneurship and business ownership since you were a kid from your father. Um, so you would think that instinctly that sends you straight to the path of entrepreneurship. How and and so my question was how and why did you go first to rigs? And then to this, which looking back was probably the best thing that could have happened to you, right? Thousand percent. But but at the moment, was it because all the all the all, because of the recession back in the day or what? Right. So you asked me a question that I probably correct, answered wrong. I did see the failures on my mom's side and my dad's side. But see, my dad was in Mexico, so I did, I just knew that he couldn't come from what my mom was like. He couldn't come because right now there's no money. But I, I didn't know anything else apart from that. So I did see a lot of failures, right? But that didn't that didn't put me in a position to go and start a business. So people think I'm gonna run my mommy and daddy's business. A lot of businesses are not established for the kids to go work in that company. And a lot of times the kids see their parents' life, like they're a small mom and pop's business, and they're like, yo, my dad's been running this hypothetically a hamburger shop, and he smells like hamburgers and he smells like fries all day long. He's there cooped up all day long and he never takes vacations and he's always stressing on money, but he's his own boss. Screw that, I'm gonna go be a nurse. That's still a job. You give me like that for them, like, I'm going to go be a nurse. So they're like, you know, so they don't follow the entrepreneurship path. And then two, the business sometimes doesn't even have the money for the fun, for the kids to be working there as well. Yeah. So th what, what forced me to go into the, uh, to the oil fields was like, I mean, to the, to the business was this, I was 23 years old and a half. I'm working for a company called GPS. I started, I broke off at a company called Key Energy. Then I went to GPS and I'm driving right here on, on, uh, right by Boca Owens. I think it's Rosedale right there on, uh. Uh, Johnson Crubble peaks in. There's a, I'm right there on the red light, and I'm and some kid crashes into my car, right? And I already had back issues because my my dad was a, he was in real estate, but he would buy houses, flip them, and sell them. So he had his all little paisita workers, right? And he'd be doing like in a dress like this, nice with the like a freaking uh, like notes and stuff like that. And he would pick work. me up from school. Yeah, the clipboard. He would pick me up from school, and he's like, "All right, let's go work, go work with these guys." I'm like, "Dad, I'm I have homework." He's like, "You are home, and you're doing work homework, right?" <laughs> but but I I've, I've been working construction since I was like nine years old, seven years old, and and then oil fields. Of course, my back was no bueno. So that car accident, when they when they rear-ended me, it really messed me up where I couldn't even put my own socks on. That car accident put me in disability for like six months and I'm depressed. And I moved back in with my parents' house. I, I get my car repossessed. I'm losing everything, bro. And my mom was like, Mijo, go back to college. Why don't you go to college? I'm like, mom, my ass has been having D's and S my whole entire life. I barely made it in high school. And now you want me to go to college? I said, hell no. Hell no, I'm not going to go to college. I'm like, for what? To go to school, invest this money, and then make less money than I'm making the oil fields? I'm like, mom, I'm not about to be broke for four years and then go go work, you know, go make less money than I'm making the oil fields. Hell no. She's like, but, but you could do something else. I'm like, mom, I'm an oil field worker. That's as good as it gets for guys like me. And, and my mom was like, no, I don't believe that. And, and we're arguing, bro. And I'm like, I'm going to go back to the rigs. I'm like, if anything, I'm going to lie to the doctor, tell him that my back is better just so I can go back to the rigs because I couldn't stand being broke. Cause I'm on disability. And then my mom's like, you can't do that to yourself. You're going to end up in a wheelchair. I said, mom, this is, that's who I am. I'm an, I'm a roughneck. My mom actually said, fine. After a few months later, my mom says, Mijo, there's a company looking for people. I'm like, what is it? She says, Obamacare, bro. We don't do Obamacare. I don't know why the hell my mom even said that. Right. <laughs> so I walk into this office, bro. Everybody's dressed in suits and ties. They're all in their fifties and sixties. Edgar, everybody is. It's a small office, bro. 900 square foot office. Everybody's dressed really nice. I'm all tatted up, you know, win a foothill, east side, you know what I mean? Lamont for life. And, you know, so I show up, bro, big old knucklehead. By this time, I was already in the oil since I was 18, 19, all the way to 23, almost 24. So you can imagine my wiring was a little psycho, you know? So I walk in and they're like, everybody's like, oh, what do you do? I'm like, you guys are weird. And this guy, like, everything, for me, everything was weird about it. 
So then Erica Del Toro, who's my mentor, she, she at the time, I didn't know her. She comes up to me. She's like, oh, you're Alejandro. Your mom told me. He's like, oh, my mom was like, yeah, this is Alejandro. He's a hard worker. And I'm such a jerk. I'm like, listen, if you guys don't pay more than five grand a month, I'm not interested. <laughs> and she looks at me and she chuckles. She's like, all right, mijo, I used to make a quarter million dollars in your real estate. There's a reason why I'm here. I'm like, all right, let me just shut the hell up and watch this presentation, <laughs> right? So I walk into this room. It's kind of like a networking event, right? And I go into this room and there's a bunch of like old people and they're all talking in the presentation. They talk about, they start talking about business entrepreneurship. I was like, hell yeah. I always wanted to have a business. I just didn't have the credit. I didn't have the savings. I didn't have the money. And I didn't have, my dad was in Mexico and my stepdad went back to being a truck driver. My mom's back, you know, being a waitress at a restaurant. So it's like, I'm like, okay, I've always wanted to have a business. I just don't have anything of experience. And then they start talking about finances and money. And I'm like, yup, yup. We don't learn nothing about money. True. High school, junior high doesn't teach us nothing about money. Facts. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, Latinos? Yeah, we definitely don't talk about money. If it is, it's like taboo or mechala. It's como falta respeto if you talk about money. Right? But we always have money for quinceaneras, carnazas, and micheladas. Right? <laughs> so I'm like, yup. No wonder our family's still in their 60s and 70s. They're still forced to work. Yup. My raza. And they're not talking about my raza. I was just applying to what I've always seen in my yeah. environment, you know? And then I'm like, yup. And then they talk about life insurance. And you know what's crazy, guys? When I was 19 years old, I purchased my own half a million dollar life insurance policy without my mom and my dad even telling me. Because my dad would tell me he had life insurance every single time we used to go to Mexico. When I finally asked him, what's life insurance? He's like, look, man, I left my country. I left everything. So the day that I, the day that I came to America, I want to give my family a better life. But if I die, who's going to give you guys that life? I'm like, I don't know, dad. He's like, that's why if I die, I have life insurance. So you guys can receive money to keep, from, keep traveling, keep having a good life. Keep having, you know, start a business one day or go to school or do something. That's why I have life insurance. So it's like, if I'm alive, I'm going to take care of you. But if I die, I'm taking care of you guys too. I'm 10 years old and I heard that. So when I'm 19 years old, I bought myself a half million dollar policy without mommy and daddy telling me. Because I said, if I die, you best believe I'm going to take care of my mom and my dad while I'm alive. But if I happen to kick the bucket before them, they're going to receive money a quarter million dollars each. So I bought life insurance like that. So they're, now these white people are in their 50s and 60s are talking about life insurance. And what do you think I said? I said, hell yeah, everybody needs it. And then they showed me that if I got into business, they were willing to teach me. I said, okay, I'm a slow learner. I'm a DNF student. They put me in general ed classes. They tried to put me in special ed twice. My sixth grade year and my sophomore year, they tried to put me in special ed. I said, if you guys are willing to teach me, okay, I'll do it. And two, if you're willing to be patient with me and teach me, I, I believe that everybody needs life insurance. So I'm like, you're showing me that if I can make, if I can sell a policy to a family that needs life insurance and I can make two grand, what I make in a week in the rigs, I can make that in one sell by providing something that they freaking need. Yep. I'm like, game. And I got into the business. I struggled. I freaking didn't even get my license my first year. I failed my test five times. Everybody's like, oh, Alejandro, you're so stupid. You're going to these trainings and these meetings and you're not even getting paid. Everybody was talking crap. Everybody, you know what I said to them? I said, look, man, you're the stupid one for going to college for four years and not getting paid. So you want to talk crap to me because I'm in this class for a year and I haven't got paid? I'm like, well, but you're in school for four years. I'm like, and you're going to go invest a bunch of money to go work for somebody else. So you expect me to pay 60 grand to go and be broke for four years to go work for somebody else. Imagine that concept of business, bro. What if I told you guys, hey, you know what? Pay me 60 grand. I'm not going to pay you for four years. And then I'm going to pay you and control your time, your schedule, your income. And I'll tell you what you get paid. And I'm going to pay you 60 grand a year. And if you get lucky, maybe 70,000. And that's a business proposition. Would you give me your 60 grand, not make no money for four years and then only get, and then have, have somebody control your business for you and then tell you what you get paid for the rest of your life. Are you okay with that? So that was my concept. What the hell? Like, let me show up. Even if I'm not getting paid, I'll learn. Yep. My second year, I got my license. I made 32000 which was a freaking big pay cut. And then I made 160000 and I started making a lot of money. And then I, begun, I became successful in my business. Something key that you just said that um, is really important to me is that you got behind what you were selling, right? So, yeah. so you believed in what you were offering. Yeah. You know, um, and, and I think that that's a huge part of your success because you don't feel like, well, I'm not, I'm, this is in no way saying you are, right? But you don't feel like you're fucking anybody over or you're scamming no. everybody. Every, everything you do, you're doing it with, with, the best intention of your thousand percent. Yeah. You have to believe in what you're providing. Have you ever noticed that people jump from industry to industry? You want to know why? Because they don't sell out to what they don't hundred percent believe in what they're providing. If you 1000% believe in what you stand for, nothing can move you. Not of a mountain and not a bulldozer because nothing can move you from that concept of philosophy of belief. Hypothetically, I believe in God. You bring me an atheist, I don't give a damn how much scientific crap they're going to give me. Nothing's going to make me believe that God doesn't exist. 
Nothing's going to tell me why I shouldn't be in my son's life. Because those are my principles and morals. I believed in life insurance. I believe in entrepreneurship. I believe in freedom. I believe that when you come to America and you have parents who sacrifice everything, they jump the border and they struggle and they work endless for you in this country, is I believe that it's your responsibility to pay them back for what they did for you. It's called return of investment. They invested in you. They had, I have three kids, guys. I have a six-year-old, a five-year-old, and a three-year-old. Guys, my daughter last night, randomly, at 1.30 in the morning, at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I wake up like at 5 or go to the gym, which I see the gym all the time, and respect for that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we're trying. And, right? We're, we're there at 5 o'clock at 5.30 in the morning. Next time you ain't there, I'm going to come uh, like, like, where you at, bro? <laughs> and, uh, and, so then, uh, and so then my daughter is throwing up at 2.30 in the morning. I have to change the bed sheets, shower her at 2.30 in the morning. Dude, imagine all this crap that our parents do for us, for us to grow up and say, I'm going to work and just take care of myself. And that's a age. And if I can help them, I'll pay their cell phone bill cuando se puede. What the hell? Bro, if that's the case, if they're your parents who are going to come here to stay broke, they should have stayed in Mexico and milk cows for a living and eat some bomb tacos because Mexico is a beautiful country. Why did they come to America? They came for us, for them and for us. We must pay back. Boom. Oh, that was interesting, right? <laughs> so I was like, what happened? We didn't, we didn't give them the heads uh, up. We was, uh, I was like, what? <laughs> but, but that was cool. So, but for me, it's like, yo. You must pay them back. Okay, my dad was an asshole. If you, okay, if your dad's an asshole, no problem. Then you know what? That asshole still brought you to America. If you don't like it, go back to Mexico. Go to a rancho where they grow up with no shoes, no food, no water, no electricity. Go back to your dad's country and try to start from scratch and see if you're not an asshole too. Yep. At the end of the day, they did you the biggest service by bringing you here, right? Ooh. Or or at least for us, being born here. Were you born here? You were born uh, I was born here, yeah. Yeah, you were born here. So for Lamont's us- kind of like, make a little bit of We're half We're, <absent. laughs> we're half her, bro. Double citizenship, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but but even, even you know, like like you said, being here, we didn't jump the border. No. You know? We didn't, we didn't, we didn't. Have you have you seen the movies? Dude. I mean, they're movies, but it's Tom brutal. My, my, one of my, one of our uncles, He's he's told me the stories on what it really is. These movies aren't people far die. off. They're not far off. Yeah, he, you know, like these movies show people dead on the side of while you're crossing, right? And people think it's just a movie. No, it's fucking reality. Yes. You know, we didn't go through that. That gives you scars that you'll never forget. Millions of people have died, but people have been stuck in trucks and dying of like what, heat. What about that story of the people in Bakersfield? Did you hear about that? No. You didn't hear about that two weeks ago? Two, three weeks ago? No. Um, a guy, a guy came out of his uh you know, a neighbor in, I think it was like in the Oswell area. Yeah. Uh, a guy came out and he started knocking on all the neighbor's doors saying, help us, help us. And there was like, I think 11 or 17 people yeah. uh, uh, trapped in the house. Yeah. So there'd be, they like brought them from Mexico yeah. and they got arrested. The people got arrested for human trafficking. Wow, bro. You see what I'm saying? Like Bakersfield, bro. Think about it. Like, don't you think what well, people hearing it in the podcast right now, don't you think one of their moms got raped on the way over here? Yeah, probably. 1000%. Don't you think some of our uncles got molested when they were kids on their way over here? Like, and, and for uh, for them to have kids here and the kids only worry about themselves because of their credit score, their savings, and they don't worry about taking care of their parents. Bro, you, so people say, how do you find your passion? You know what my passion is? My freaking family is my passion. I'll work you 18 hours a day as long as my mom and my dad and my kids and my wife are taken care of. First, look, Yanali, Yanali Aguilar is my wife. She's a, bro, I told you guys when we were having lunch, uh, you know, I love my wife. I, I'm madly in love with my wife. And I, I die for her, man. But when I was dating her, bro, she was the type of girl, bro, that if she posted, like, I want coffee on, on Facebook, right? There'll be, like, a thousand fools. Oh, where are you at? I'm at Starbucks right now. You know, like, I'll take it. Like, you know, that girl can even put a period and there'll be, like, a thousand likes, right? So she had a lot of guys in her inbox, right? And I remember the first time that we had a date. So what, and, was, your, what was your pickup line? Uh, it wasn't my life insurance. I'll tell you guys my pickup line right now, which was really good. My pickup line was sick. He, he, was, he was like, hey, you need life insurance? Uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> she came in for an interview. She's like, how do you move up? I'm like, you got to get with this guy. Right? <laughs> but, uh, but you know, bro. That's a, that's a good way. <laughs> yeah, man. So then I was like, so I remember that we had a date, right? And then uh, our date was like at 8.30 p.m. We didn't go watch a movie. And then I remember uh, somebody walked into my office like around 7.30 and uh and it wasn't even an appointment it's just guy just walked in and it was somebody else that brought them they're like hey can you sit down and kind of chop it up with this guy about the business maybe you can recruit him or sell him i'm like yeah for sure so bro i'm it's now eight o'clock she's like are you almost coming i said i'll be there shortly i text her then she calls me later hey are you almost coming i said yeah i'll be there shortly and now it's like eight o'clock she's like it's it's like almost 8 30 the movie's gonna start like at nine i'm like yeah i'll be there shortly bro it's 9 15 i'm not even texting her back it's 9 30 i rec- i see the text messages i'm still talking to the guy he's like she's like i already took off my makeup just forget it right okay cool no problem 
So the way hang up. I mean, so I, I talked to, I started talking to the guy. I called Yana. I'm like, well, hey, Yana Lee. She's like, hey, I'm sorry. Somebody walked in. She's like, you told me we had a movie date and I already took off my makeup and that's messed up that you didn't let me know. I said, look, I'm sorry. I said, but I had somebody walk in. She's like, still, we had plans. I'm like, let me tell you something, Yana Lee. I said, you know, you're a beautiful girl. You're gorgeous. That's a cuerpada. That's guapa and you're beautiful. I said, but let me tell you something. There's a million guys in your inbox right now. Thousands of them. They're saying, hey, baby. Hey, beautiful. Hey, gorgeous. There's a million of them. I said, and they're all in your inbox. And let me tell you something. Those guys, when they get home off of work, they go home at 5 o'clock, 5.30 in the afternoon. They're going to drink beers with their combas in the garage. That's not me. If you're expecting a guy who's going to be home at 5.30 in the afternoon drinking beers with his homies in the garage, that's I'm not that guy. I said, I'm the guy who's going to travel the world. I'm going to take care of my parents. I'm going to have my kid, my parents travel the world. My kids, I didn't have kids yet, guys. Like my, my kids are going to travel the world. I'm going to have an amazing life. And whoever the hell I marry, I'm going to give them that life as well. And I'm going to take care of my parents and I'm going to take care of her parents. So that's who I am. And let me tell you something. I'm not the guy who's at home at 5, 30 in the afternoon. If you want that guy, there's many of those guys in your inbox right now. I'm not him. Let me pause you real fast. So um, that being said, what you just said is really important. And and uh, and I want you to keep going because we we kind of talked about this earlier. And I want, I want the audience to know exactly what you said, right? The reason I'm pausing you is because it, how important do you think it is to have that conversation day one? You know what I mean? And and especially if, if you're already dating someone and you're going to leave your traditional you know job and come to entrepreneurship, have that conversation. What where do you think is going to that person to do the business? I'm no longer 5 p.m. guy, you know, like you said. How important do you think that is not only for your business, but for your relationship? Big time, bro. You got to set the standards now. You got to agitate that mother effort. Just kidding. But you know what I'm saying? Like, you have to put your foot down because you know what she said? You want to know her response? She's like, hurry up. Get your ass over there. Yeah, I picked her up. You know what I picked her up, bro? She was in a onesie. I picked her up. <laughs> Our first date. She's had her makeup off. Her hair was wet already. She, I guess she had already, whatever the case is. And she was in a onesie and she got in the car and she's pissed. And I said, you look beautiful. And she's like, I'm mad at you. I said, listen, I told you what I told you. I'm going to travel the world. I'm going to become successful, but I'm not going to be at home at 5.30 p.m. That, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to stop working to the day that I take care of my family. You know how much money I was making then, bro? I was broke 99. Broke as hell. I picked up in a beat up, step, my stepdad's beat up car. She jumped in a beat up car with me, bro. And, and that was my life with her, bro. And it's like in the beginning, bro, me and, my, me and Yana were broke together for like almost two years. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not, sorry. I was about to ask you that. So like, were you, because, you know, you just said you were broke, but I thought you were already, you know, doing these trips, making this money, but you were like manifesting it then, right? Bro, I was manifesting, bro. I was so, let, let me tell you something. I had a high school girlfriend and I'm not going to say her name for respect for her and her husband, which I'm happy that they have their, their business. And I remember like, uh, and if it gets to her, I'm sorry for all the things I've done, right? <laughs> but uh, but my ex-girlfriend was with her for like four years. And I remember like, and this is only narcissist. Okay, this is only narcissistic. If it's not true, fair? Look what I used to do. I used to say, hey, babe, uh, let me tell you why you don't want to break up with me. She's like, babe, I'm not trying to break up with you. I'm like, no, no. It's like, listen, listen, listen. She's like, babe, are you trying to break up with me? I'm like, no. It's like, babe, I'm not trying to break up with you. I'm like, just listen to me. She's like, what? I said, let me tell you why you don't want to break up with me. She's like, why? I said, and I'm 15, I'm 15 years old and she's 14. I'm a sophomore and she's a freshman. You know what I said to her? I said, I'm going to become successful one day. I'm going to have kids. I'm going to have two boys. I'm going to have a daughter. We're going to travel the world. I'm going to look good. I'm going to become successful. And if you break up with me, you're going to see me marry somebody else. You're going to see me in pictures on the beach with her. You're going to see me with my family. You're going to see me become a badass. You're going to see me drive a nice car. You're going to see me look good. And you're going to come across to me one day at a gas station. And you're going to look at me and say, damn, I let that man go. I said, that's why you don't want to break up. She's like, babe, I'm not trying to break up. I'm like, I'm just letting you know, though, right? <laughs> and, and obviously, I said in a four-year relationship with her. So the thing was, like, I always had that expectation because my dad has set that standard and expectation. I know I was dumb as a rock in school, right? But I knew that I had crazy-ass work ethic because, remember, I was working with construction workers since I was nine. So I said, I might not be that smart, but I'm a worker. So I, when I got to the rigs, I realized that these fools that had more experience on me, I was working faster and harder than these guys. So I surpassed them in the rigs. So I put two to two together saying, if I work hard, and I get the things done, I'm going to eventually become who I'm going to become in life. That's powerful for me to say, if I can work hard and, and be my own boss, I'm going to eventually become the man who I'm going to become. So you're right. I was manifesting this. And it's, by the way, it's only toxic if you don't make it happen. Because now I go to Aruba, Croatia, Croatia Italy, Santorini, Athens, Olympia, Jamaica, gone to all these different countries, right? Uh, uh, Monaco, Paris, I've gone to all these different countries. And, 
and 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 I have my two boys and I have my daughter and I have a beautiful wife and I have a good relationship. And I, and I will tell you that that it manifesting is so important because when you're broke, you have to live in your future because if you live in your present, you're going to quit and go back to whatever is easier to handle financially. You must live. I like that, right? You must live in your in your future, bro. You have to sit there and dream and just like daydream and like you have. And by the way, when things are tough, is the most you have to speak to existence. A guy who's twenty one years old, he's like, my family's being very hard on me doing the business and this and this and that. They're talking all kinds of crap. My family's hating. I said, let me. He's like, what do you say to that? You say this to him. I was like, what are you saying? <laughs> you would think I would say that, right? But I said this. No, not to him. Him right. to his family. Right, him to his family. I said, let me tell you what you say. He's like, what? When they give you crap next time, you tell them this. Like, mom, dad. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop until I retire, you guys. I'm not going to stop until I give you guys the life that you guys worked hard to give me. I'm not going to stop until I become successful and I can take care of you guys. I am not stopping until I pay you back everything and every sacrifice that you guys did for me. I'm going to make sure I take care of you guys. So I'm, if you're going to tell me to stop, I'm not going to to the day that I win and I take care of you guys. What the hell can mom and dad say at that point? That's so fucking powerful, bro. What do you say? Now, now... Let's say they still try to stop you from it. They're right? going to. Okay. So going You're, to. You, you, you seem like a very, 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 very family oriented man. Love my family. Okay. Would you cut off family? I had to. I had to. And, and let me, let me. Immediate family though. Yeah, I had to. Let, let me tell you why. Because, not because like, oh, screw them. They're not about this life. It wasn't that attitude. It was like, Okay. Obviously, I haven't earned your respect yet. Let me go. To, I have to go. Look, uh, please remind me to come back to the subject about women and dating entrepreneurs because I got to go back to that. Yeah, subject. no, yeah. yeah I, please I, I, bring me back to that subject, okay? Women dating entrepreneurship. We have to talk about that because that's right now what they'll go. My girlfriend loves me, but she's, you know, I work a lot and she's giving me a hard time. What do I do? Like, we got to go back to those stupid little freaking uh, mind-controlling well, we'll just touch on we'll just touch on that question and then we'll hop. Yeah, back. we'll hop back. So, so uh, uh, take me back. What was the question again? It's like, uh, da, da, da. what do you say to the family? Cutting okay. off family. Cutting off family. That's a great question. Yeah, because so, you know they have good intentions they, most of, of the time, right? They talk crap because they don't know how to love. They're like, no vas a valer madre, right? The, the truth is like, and it was like, please do better in your life. That's pretty much what they're yeah. saying, but they're saying it like vas a valer madre. So does it mean that they don't love you? No, it just means that they don't. They're just scared for you, bro. And that's normal. And it should be like that. That's parents, bro. Imagine if your kids ever start a business and you're like, dude, I think that's a terrible idea. It, like not that they start a business, but maybe they're the constant of the I guess where, where, my, where my question originates though is in the sense of like, hey, no, don't do this. And I've heard this and I've seen it happen where, um, you know, I, ha I, had a, I had a friend back when I was selling cars and this isn't even entrepreneurship, right? He's, he was never really so much a friend. It was an acquaintance. He was working at McDonald's. You know, you can imagine what he was making. This was probably two years after high school. And I was already selling cars, doing okay for myself for that age group, right? You have a you have a 19, 20 year old making 75, 80 grand. It's pretty good. Right. right? And so, you know, he sees that kind of like, oh, this dude's doing good. Hey, are you guys hiring? I, I got him to interview. And honestly, it's like I'm I'm pretty sure, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I can send somebody to you. And if I tell you, hey, dude, this guy is the yeah. guy. The interview obviously will be like, unless you hate him, right? Smooth. Unless you hate him. Smooth. But if you're just kind of like, I kind of have my doubts, but he came from him, I think I'm going to give him a chance. Right. That's how I was back then where I was working. And long story short, I get him hired. This guy doesn't show up on day one. Don't yeah. show up. And I, and I, he's, he's, he's hiding from me, like phone calls. Right. And I'm like, this motherfucker. Right. I hit him up. And if you hear this fucker, I'm still mad at you. <laughs> uh, but I hit him up. He finally answers my call and he says, dude, you won't imagine. My mom thinks that if I go work there, I'm going to drop out of college. And I said, okay, you don't have to, but I mean, okay, just tell her you won't, you know? I mean, we're younger. I'm, right. Long story short, she took his car and kicked him out of the house. For, do, for it, making she said, She said, if you go work there. You're done here. Yeah, you don't live here no more. Yeah. So, so, so there, what do you do? So, you know so what I mean? This, so this is where I was going with this answer. So my, I have a lot of, my mom has a, a, a lot of family and I love them to death. My tias and all of them, my tias, if you guys hear this, you guys know I love you them. But they didn't understand why I was working so much. I, bro, I was in the office every day in the office, leaving at 11 o'clock at night, and I'm not getting paid nothing, bro. And uh, my first year, you guys know how entrepreneurship is. Like, the first couple of years, bro, it's it's you're literally, like, if you're surviving, if you're making money, it's going back into the business. It's going back into the things you owe. It's going back to everything. You're investing, right? So my family's seen me make all this money, but they're seeing me struggle, bro. 
And my tias were like, all you care about is money. That thing, that business doesn't even pay you. They're taking advantage of you, this and this and that. And I'm just like, and so I'm like, and I'm working, bro. So if it's a Saturday and it's a family barbecue, don't you think I want to be there eating my abuelitas tortillas, bro? Don't you think I want to eat those birrias? We're from Michoacan, bro. We eat tinga, we eat the sopes, we eat some bomb food. Don't you think I want to be there with my cousins, hanging out with them, BSing with them? Of course. Dude, 1,000%, I want to be with them. I love him, bro. But the thing is like, I'm broke. <laughs> and my family is like, I want them to be good. And if I have to work, if I have to figure something out that Saturday and work to one o'clock in the morning to the sacrifice, because I have to become who I have to become. So I literally didn't go to family events almost for a few years, bro, because of the simple fact that it was like, oh, it's Saturday, but we have training on Saturday for the agencies because we have to build the agents and train them. And Saturday is the only time my, my, the agents are off typically from work. What, from. A, what age are you at this time? I'm probably 23 years old and a half when I start the business. So it's like. I, on Saturdays, I had to train my agents. And then sometimes we had events in San Francisco and it was one of my deals anniversary or, you know, or this person came to visit, but we have an event in Texas. And, as, and so my family's like hating the business because they think I'm just chasing money. And then finally, bro, finally one year, um, I have, uh, I get in a very, I get very, very sick. Wind up in the hospital for about a week and it was very life threatening, right? Some stupid thing that I did. And so then um, uh, I'm probably making about, Sixteen thousand dollars a month now residually, and I'm. This is back in two thousand. Take, take home, take home, two thousand nineteen. Yeah, this was back in two thousand. No, not my bad. No, no, this was back in two thousand eighteen because my wife was pregnant. So it's two thousand eighteen. So I'm probably no, I'm probably making a good eighteen thousand to twenty thousand dollars a month. And after after expenses, probably about a good eighteen thousand dollars a month. And so then I get my. I already have my two boys, and they're young. They're small, three, probably four years old at this time. And uh, I'm in the hospital, bro. And all my cousins were pissed at me. They hadn't talked to me for like, they haven't had a good relationship with me for the last four or five years. And they came to my off to me. They came to my whole, to my uh, room in the hospital and all my cousins are there, bro. And I'm like, I'll die. Right. With IV. Right. And then I asked them a question. I said, can I ask you guys a question? They're like, yeah. Do you guys think I love you guys? They're like, of course. And my son, my cousin were like, yeah, the ones that I, I, we had some beef. Yeah. They're like, yeah. I'm like, no, no, no. We were tight. Do you guys think I love you guys? They're like, we do. I said, I love you guys so much. I said, can I ask you guys a question? I'm like, what would happen if your mom, my tia, she got a heart attack and she got sick and everybody needs to come up with money and the only thing to save her was for us to put down 40, 50 grand. I said, can I ask you guys a question? Do, like, do you think I would cough up my money to make sure my tia is alive and we keep her alive? They're like, yeah. Do you think I would do that for my grandparents? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, what would happen if I didn't get into the business? Don't you think my brother probably would end up in jail or in prison again? Don't you think he'd probably end up dead or in the hospital? One thing he's like, yeah. Let me ask you a question. Do you think I miss being with you guys eating tortillas? Tortillas is a amount of being with you guys. Do you guys think I missed that? you think I wanted to be there or do you think I wanted to be working? It's so like, I think you wanted to be working too because you like to make money. I said, no, I'd rather be with you guys. But I knew that one day crap was going to hit the fan. And out of all of you guys, as much as I love you guys, you guys are focusing on your life. And you know what I was focusing on? I said, I wanted to be the one. The one that changed the game. Bro, 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 hold on. Let me just fucking pause you. Look what I just fucking wrote on this paper. Being the one. I was being literally going to ask you. About yeah. being, that's crazy. Yeah, bro. I wanted to be the one <laughs> that if crap went down, they can depend on me. They can depend on my like, guys. I love you guys. But the truth is, that's why I had to disappear because I needed to work so much. I didn't isolate myself from them because of the negative crap. I can take the crap talk and they still talk crap even though I'm successful. You know what I mean? But not like that. They're but just that's good. It, yeah, you know, they still the relationship. Me like, you look, they're like, you might be Alejandro, right? But right here, you're Hano, you're Alex. Alex so I'm like, all right, whatever, right? But they, we we talk crap. And but the case is, I didn't I didn't isolate because that I isolated because I needed to get my money right. Because if crap ever hit the fan, and by the way, don't you think it has? I've been in PHP almost nine years. Of course, one thousand at least once a year, right, bro? <laughs> and my position is not once a year, right? It's like, yo. So the thing is, like, do you think I've me and my brother have came through for our family financially? Of course, one thousand percent. And that for me. Is why I isolated from my family because I needed to be the one dropping some knowledge here, bro. Appreciate that. Let's get back on the topic of of having uh, the right spouse, right, or or right girlfriend. Ooh. So, um, I, I've I've preached on this for a long time. I really, really, really am a believer that your your significant other plays probably a bigger role in your life than you play yourself. Yes, right. So, um, you know, you 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 were talking about it, and I kind of we kind of went a whole different direction, right? But um, you know, 
you said you your first date you were late to because of work. Um, and then, you know, we'll fast forward a couple of years, you end up getting married. You you started dating her uh-huh. um when you had barely started the business, yeah. right? Like I you just, I had just got licensed. Yeah, okay. So she went with you through the struggles and she's Big with time. you through the through the through the success, right? Right. You know, how important and how 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 happy, how relaxed do you feel being able to get home and and open up, have that relationship with she's not just your wife, yeah. right? She, At the time she wasn't my wife. No, no, I'm girlfriend. saying now. Like she's my wife. I'm saying now she's not just your wife oh. anymore. Now, now it's like your business partner, your best friend, your, your best your, friend. Like you open up to her, bro, right? Bro. So, so how's that been for you? And how important do you think it is? Um, and where do you? And actually, the biggest question for me yeah. is, where do you set that standard in the sense of like I've been with my girlfriend or my wife for five, <laughs> ten, two years, twenty years, whatever the <clears throat> case may be. I just got entrepreneurship uh, into entrepreneurship. And obviously the best time to set the standard is day one. Right. Okay. But let's say you fucked up. Now you're four years deep and you were bitched the whole time. And, and and the reason that I say it that way is like you didn't, you're not your because I get being, what you're saying. Being fake is harder than being your fucking self. You right. know what I mean? Right. And so what I'm getting at by this is like it's actually it, easier, but then you eventually resent yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Um, but let's say you fucked up and you didn't set it from the beginning. Right. How important is it to to know yourself, dude? You need to have that conversation. Wow, bro. Very powerful. You look, man, I've mentored a lot of couples. I have teachers who do this business, who do the industry with me that I've trained. And my brother and me, we've kind of collaborated with this. You see that teachers that make 100 grand a year part-time doing this business. I have single moms making $200,000 a year in this business. I got couples that I've trained with me and my brother that now these guys are making over a quarter million dollars. We have so many guys. My brother is a millionaire. And I'm the one that kind of brought my brother into the business. And then he freaking took it off to a different level. So- I have so many a, questions. Bro, so I have questions. 15, I have 15 <laughs> offices. I have 300 licensed agents active. You know, um, I've insured in the last two years, we insured 15,000 people. Think about, think about how many couples tried starting the business or how many men tried starting the business or women tried starting the business. What do you think with the number one, the number one that was making every, imagine I had a guy, badass, bro, poof, show up, stud, bro, stud, buff, handsome, good, beast. This, I'm like, this guy's gonna make 100,000, 200,000 like this first couple of years in business. Cause there's guys like that come in first year, make 100 grand, 200 grand. I'm like, this guy's gonna kill it. What do you think the number one thing that killed him from business? His partner? Spouse, bro. A spouse? Spouse. Or you think spouse more than money? Spouse. Yeah. Spouses. So, like, where would you rank that, bro, as far as like, like, oh uh, like God. important decisions? Like, is that number one, number two? Number one cause of them quitting is their spouse. Don't you think we have a bunch of badass women, bro? Okay, and, and what does husband say? Ah, you gotta be home and take care of the kids. And then the husband's working, you know, have this job, and now she can't get her nails and can't get her hair done. She's all beautiful. She's a beautiful girl, but now she doesn't feel confident. She doesn't feel secure. And her man found her beautiful. She was gorgeous when he met her. Oh, he loved dating her. Oh, he promised on the Luna de Estrellas, gets her pregnant, says, You gotta stay home with the kids. That fool goes to work now, right? He goes to work, says, You have to take care of the kids. Oh, why are you spending your money? Why'd you spend $90 on nails? You know, we can't afford that right now. Now, the girl doesn't look as beautiful. She doesn't look as gorgeous. And she starts gaining weight. She starts feeling insecure. She starts, you know, start drinking soda every night and drinking ice and eating ice cream every night. She eats her way her fillings. She feels like crap. Then she says, I want to become successful. And that girl was a straight A student. That girl could become a, somebody who can make 100000 200000 300000 400000 a million dollars a year. But guess what? Guess who's giving her a hard time when she gets, she's like, I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to go start a business. Who do you think is giving her crap? Because maybe she's trying to juggle the kids. She's trying to juggle the business. She's trying to juggle education. And then she still has to cook clean. And then the husband gets home. Oh, she's running 30 minutes late. He gets home. He's grumpy. And the food is not ready. And she just finished an appointment at school or in a business. And she's running late. Guess who's giving her her hell? The husband. Because the husband now destroyed all of her potential. So the question is, what do we do in four years? I was with the girl. And I'm not going to say her name out of respect. She is, uh, she's a great person, bro. Phenomenal individual, but we're not compatible. Does that make sense? And our relationship was very toxic. But she's a great person. She's going to make somebody extremely happy one day. She has beautiful traits to her, but we're not compatible. This, this human and that human, we're just not compatible. Does that make sense? Respect for her. Of course. I was with her for four years. Okay. This is before Yana Ali. I was with her for four years and I'm making calls at 12 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night. I'm on disability. She would get home from work and I would go to her place and I'm making calls. I'll be on the phone in her own room making calls, bro. 
I'm not licensed yet. I don't care. I'm going to build my agency. I'm going to build my business. And you know, she's like, ah, and she would be getting mad. And I'm like, and I looked at her I'm like, babe, what's wrong? She's like, you never spend time with me no more. You're always working. You're always doing this. You're always doing that. I'm with her for four years, bro. Four years vested. And I lurked at her. And I said, dude, the whole entire of my relationship, I always paid for everything. As I should. I'm a man, bro. I'm going to pay for dinner. I'm going to pay for this. I'm going to pay for that. I'm old school. I paid for everything for four years. Nunca le pedí nada for four years. And I'm like, yo. I looked at her and I said, can I ask you a question? She's like, yeah. I said, are you going to retire my parents one day? Are you going to take care of them? Are you going to take care of my mom? Are you going to take care of my dad? Are you going to take me all, all over the world? Are you going to allow me to have the life that I want? Are you going to give me that? You're not. I'm going to do it. So if I'm like, so if I don't do it now and if you're not going to give it to me, I want to get it. Yeah. I said, yo, dude, you got to let me do my thing, but you never pay attention. That's when I said, ah, uh, you're a phenomenal person, but I'm not compatible for you. Yeah. So you know what I did? I broke off a four-year relationship that night. And that would have never worked out. Hell no. No, you know, you would, that, that break was going to happen that day, two years later, four years later, five years later. It would have happened even after you had kids. Right. 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 Something's going to have to give, right? Either, either your dreams and your aspirations. My dreams or her. Yeah. Dude, my dad left, his, that left everything, gave everything for us, my mom, for her. Dude, I'm sorry. You're a beautiful girl and you're going to make somebody happy one day. There's, do you guys realize there's millions of girls turning 18 years old every single day? Of course. So for me to lose everything, for one woman, you got to be kidding me, bro. I don't care if she has. Thank you. Thank you. I don't care if she has <laughs> chichis, nalgas, pretty face. There's a million of them turning 18 years old every single day. So the truth is this, that I was not going to give and compromise who I was going to become for my family for a woman. Not going to happen. The, now on that, you, you mentioned, the, you know, um, your wife or significant other. Um, I think it's more important when it's your wife, when it's your girlfriend. I don't think that, you know necessarily you're kind of stopping her from doing anything because you guys are still kind of just dating whatever but once it becomes your wife that's a good um, question. And, and you and you kind of um you know hey if you want to stay home you can whatever in, in in our scenario our wives stay home and so the question i'm trying to ask here is when they stay home obviously they're not bringing in income right so let's do this for those men listen to this podcast you promised her a good life you told her she was beautiful why has your woman gained weight? She had a kid. Okay, I get that. Why is she not allowed to get her nails done? Maybe his money's tight. Okay. You found her beautiful. See, if you have an investment, let's say you, you worked hard and you, and you worked hard, right? And you bought yourself a car and you're building it and you're working it. Would you scratch up your own car and beat your own car up? No, you, would, you would take care of it, right? Imagine that you bought, somebody gave you a, a brand new car. Are you going to take care of as much as a car that you built yourself and you put a new paint job on? No. Have you seen those men that kind of yeah, collect yeah, their car? Yeah, of course. Versus another guy who kind of bought his own Mercedes. Like, I ah, scratch it. I'll just fix it later. Yeah. Well, I don't know why. Because there's more time vested, right? That girl was at Mercedes. She took care of herself. She did all that, right? So for the men out there, bro, you found her beautiful. And now you don't want her to work for any reason. And now all of a sudden, she's gaining weight. She's not looking good. And what are you going to do? Eventually, you don't treat her as good. And then another girl at your job is talking to you nice. And guess what do you do? You go pipe that girl and eventually you leave your wife. So she loses. That's not fair to her. The only reason, and I'm going to say that again. There, excuse me. There's no ugly wives. There's only poor husbands. You you feel me? There's no no ugly wives, only poor husbands. Now, in exactly where I was going with this was, should there be a budget for your stay-at-home wife? Yes, there should be a budget. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying... Look, either two things. Either that man needs to go and work more. Does that make sense? Either work more because it's not fair to her that she can't take care of herself, get her nails done, get her hair done. Well, let me piggyback off that. There shouldn't be a budget then because if she wanted to, she would go back to work, right? But you're not letting her. But you're not letting her. So you got to make the money she needs. Exactly. So it's like either let her go and start a business. Don't get in her way. It's, look, if, you're, if the role here is for her to stay home and take care of the kids, cool. But you know that it's not fair to her because now you're always on her as far as what she can and cannot buy and what she can invest for herself and not do. And that's and she wants to help her mom be like, we can't, right? And whatever the case is, that's not fair to her. So allow her to, if she says, I'm going to go do something part-time when the kids are at school. I'm going to go start a business. 
support her, love her, encourage her, empower her. Imagine you come home from work and she's talking crap to you every single day after you bust your ass in the, in the oil fields, you bust your ass as a mechanic, you bust your ass in construction, and then you get home. She doesn't have dinner. She's disrespecting you. She's being rude to you. She, the house is dirty. You know, the kids are not taken care of. And then she's still ba uh, bashing you. She's He's he's already going through his struggles. They, she needs to show him the love, the respect, the honor. But guess what? As much as the woman needs to do that for the man, the man needs to do that for the woman. If there's a money issue, and she can't do something for her family. She can't do something for herself. Allow her and empower her. Don't, she's, of course, she has to balance everything else as well. But she also needs to, like, she's going to go through her challenges to support her, love her. Show her, like, babe, don't worry. Look, I got you. Of course, it's going to be hard. But guess who's ultimately going to win if they, she succeeds and he succeeds? Yep. The kids and the family. Does. Now, obviously, obviously, no one has a perfect relationship, Nobody right? Does. Everyone argues. Everyone has discussions or whatever. Mm -hmm. How off your game are you if you ever have a morning morning argument with your wife? Bro, it throws me off. It throws me off. We have a rule in my house, and it doesn't always go as planned. <laughs> but we have a rule. It's like, look, no matter what it is, if I say sorry, we have to drop it. And if you say sorry, I'll drop it, no matter how mad I am. And it's worked. It, of course, every couple fights. I think recently, bro, we had a fight that we didn't talk to each other for three days. And that's like, bro, very uncommon. You know what I mean? For like three days. But finally, you know, we, we she apologized. <laughs> finally, because, you know. I was right finally for once, <laughs> and um, but I have a rule, bro. Like you like I go mucho. I'm in, I'm impulsive. You know, I I I'm having ADHD, so it's like yo, so like I go mucho, right? But then I I said, babe, you're right. La regué. I'm sorry, and she's like, okay. I'm like, can I have a kiss? No. I'm like, babe. I said I'm sorry. It's like one, right? But it <laughs> yeah, works but because over, yeah. because it, it takes humbleness, bro. It takes humbleness to say I'm sorry. And I, and I'm if there's anyone you need to be humble to in life, it's your significant oh, other. Bro. Dude, like, look, man, for us, man, you got to treat your wife good. Let me tell you why. One, yes or no, that we like respect. That's in the Bible. That's our DNA. We like respect. Who gives us our respect more than anybody? Our wife. Two. Well, who should? Who should? Two. You guys you guys were single at one point. You guys remember eating McDonald's and freaking Burger King all the time? And of all this course. Stuff. After a while, you get disgusted from it. You yeah. just want a home-cooked meal. Who typically takes care of the home-cooked meal? Your wife. Your wife. Who typically knows the household, the kids, how they're going and making sure the house stays clean and organized and smells good? Who's, who's, who has a fabulous on that floor? <laughs> yeah. Your wife. Okay. Who gives you sex? Your wife. I would hope only your right. wife. Right? I would hope only your wife, right? And then, and, and who can give you cuddles and affection and pick you up when you're down at your lowest? Your wife. So the truth is, bro, when times are tough and we're going through the business tough, man, how to get home, bro? And I'm like, man, I'm stressing, bro. I'm like, I haven't slept. I'm, you know, I can't even eat. Bro, coming home to a wife because I treat her good. You know how powerful it is when I get home. She's like, baby, everything's going to be fine. We made you food. Like, the kids are good. Everything's good. I'm like, thank you, baby. And I didn't just hold her. And I don't have to say much because I don't need to vent to her. Like, everyone, you know, this is going on. You know, Edgar's talking, you know, crap about me on Facebook. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I'm not going to like, I'm not saying that, which we'll talk about that subject later, right? But I'm like, yo, I'm not, I'm hugging her. And, and it, it just is like, baby, everything's going to be you fine. You feel at home, right? Oh, oh my God. But if you're bashing that person that gives you sex, why the hell did we want to look good in high school and drive a car? Why did we want to go to the gym? Why? Because before we had the girl, we were trying to get a car to impress the girl. We were trying to make sure we impress our friends. We wanted to respect amongst our friends. We wanted the girls to respect us. We wanted to look good so we can have the beautiful girl. And then once we have her, we bash that. What the hell is the purpose of even having the girl? Once you gain her, then you're like, cool, screw, I, I lost it now. That girl's going to get older. And you know what? Look who has the most BBLs. Single girls who got out of relationships in their 20s. And you know who has the most BBLs? Single moms now. Imagine, bro, you bro. treat your wife like crap. You finally cheat on her because you never, never take care of yourself. You never treat her good. You break up. You break up your family. And your kids see a divorce. Then your girl starts going to the gym. She's like, and you're like, well, I don't care about her, right? Because no tenia chichis, no tenia nalgas. She didn't take care of herself. But now, guess what? Now she's making her own money. Now she can buy the mascara. Now she can get her eyelashes done. Now she can get her hair done. Now she can make time for the gym because she don't have to cater to your non appreciated ass. Then she has saves up a little money. She saves up five grand. She goes to Tijuana and gets herself some nalgas. Then she saves up a little bit more money and then she gets herself some titties. And now she has a small waist and has some lipo. And now she has 15,000 followers on Instagram. And now she has a bunch of guys saying, I'll buy you the world. And now she has guys saying her Louis Vuitton. And you'll be saying, my wife's a slut. No, you're the idiot for mistreating your lady. Bro. Bro. <laughs> Does that make sense? I love like, it. I love it, bro. That's why I'm like, yo, who's the best investment? Your wife. Yeah, of course. Of course. Bro, I'm going to be sleeping with her. Look, like, imagine she's 65 years old and I'm still a man and I'm taking Viagra and I still got it up. Well, guess what? I'm having sex with the most precious thing yep. that loves me back. She's the best investment. 100%. So um, 
you know, here, here, play, playing devil's advocate to that, um, you know, many people will will call that kind of arrogant, right? Because the only people that, that 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 think so here here's here's where I'm going with this. Some people say be humble, and that you're arrogant, right, or whatever. Not you, but in general, like, oh, this guy only thinks that way because he has money, and now that he has money, he thinks he's a shit. But what about when you're broke and whatever, right? Do you think being broke is a choice, or or it's a or, phase? It's it's a phase that you choose to be in. No, you don't choose. It's a phase you must go through to become successful. But staying broke it eventually becomes a decision. So staying broke is a choice. It's, staying broke is a decision. But being broke is a phase. Does that make sense? So like poor is a mindset. Broke is a phase. You know, you know Edwin, right? Sandoval? Uh, Edwin Sandoval. I think I do. He's a singer. He's a local. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, a uh, boxer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, uh, yeah. he wrote a song actually and I just thought about it right now that it says that... Um, don't quote me on this. It says something in the lines of being born being born broke isn't your problem. Staying broke is your problem. Yeah, very famous right. quote. And and I will tell I'll tell you this, man. Like, look, man, I remember Yana being pregnant. I'm 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 only making like that year I made only like 32 grand. I have to pay office rent. I just got into a new office right there by like uh where the Panera Bread's at, the new one that they just built. And I'm broke, bro. Broke. She's pregnant. She's working at Fast Trip right there on Ming Avenue. I remember one time I'm doing an interview. I'm recruiting a guy into my agency. He's like, can I ask you a question? He's like, yeah. I don't understand. Like, Bro, I'm broke, but I'm dressing nice. And I had clothes from Goodwill. But I'm putting it together. You know what I mean? Fake it till you make it. And I'm there, bro. And he asked me, like, can I ask you a question? Like, yeah, if your business is, so, is going to be so successful, why does your girl work at gas station on Fast Trip? She works on me right here. I'm like, she does. Why? I thought, I'm like, where the hell's the manual for this one, bro? Like, I was actually going to say that. How do you even fucking? Just, how do you answer yeah, that? Yeah. I said, look, let me tell you something. I said, mm, how'd you answer at the moment? Yeah. I said, look, let me tell you something. I said, first, she's not my wife. I said, she, she's my girlfriend. And honestly, look, right now where I'm at, right now where we're at, it's just a phase. We're eventually going to have the future. We're eventually going to become successful. But at this moment, it's like me. It's like you asking me. It's like watching Apple in the garage and saying, how do I know this is the business going to work? Bro, we don't. We're just going to freaking build it. And eventually she's going to make it happen because it's going to happen. There's no plan B. It's only plan A. We're going to eventually make it happen regardless of the case. So right now my girl's making her money at Fast Trip. I may be making my money here, but I'm like, but one day I'm going to travel the world. <laughs> I'm going to have a badass life. I'm going to have a beautiful family. That's always been your, your goal. Always, bro. Travel the world. Have a, take care of my parents. Retire my parents. So I would always repeat the dream. I would say the dream to everybody, family, negative, haters. Everybody, I would say the dream to them all the time. So so the truth is when she was working at Fast Trip, bro, her stomach's getting bigger. I couldn't buy the creams for her stomach. Her breasts are getting bigger. I couldn't buy her the bras. I, her pants, I couldn't buy her stretchy pants. And I remember going up to her one day and my cousin, his name is Rafael Aguilar. He has a Rafa appliance company, but but he's he's a manager at Camino at a restaurant. Shout out to Alex out there in Camino, one of the hands down best, best Mexican restaurants. But um, so he's working there. I said, uh, I said, babe, uh, I go to my wife. And I'm like, babe, which is my girlfriend. I'm like, babe, um, I think I'm gonna go be a bartender at, at Camino at a restaurant. She's like, babe, you've been a PHP for two years. You're not quitting now. I said, love, I can't even support you right now. Our baby's coming in freaking April. It's October. I got nothing for us. I can't support you. We're living in my brother's house. We're renting a room. Look, babe, we have a little room in Ricky's house. What am I supposed to do? I can't even buy you what you need. She says, I don't need nothing. I'm fine. You're not quitting. I said, babe, I'm done. I'm not going to let you struggle. I'm about to have a baby and I can't even freaking buy food for us. We're living off a of wick, bro. You know how embarrassing it is to be a business? Oh, I'm going to be a broker one day on Instagram. Hey, business entrepreneurship, trying to say, sell the dream of the vision when you don't even have food and you tell your agents, hey, I'm going to go home and eat and I have to eat breakfast, lunch and dinner is cereal and kicks and Cheerios and brains and rice. And, and then my girl's working at a gas station and she's pregnant and she looks at me and she's sitting on the bed and I'm like, I'm going to go be a bartender. She says, I don't need nothing. No, you're not. She's like, I believe in you. You work hard. You've been there for two years and I believe in you. I know you're going to make it happen. I'm like, babe, I can't even support. She's like, I don't need nothing. I'm fine. I started crying. I'm like, okay, fine. I'm going to get, so you know what I did? I freaking doubled down. I got to the office at 7.30 in the morning. I started freaking leaving back home at 1 o'clock in the morning. Her whole entire pregnancy, bro, I was at the office at 7.30 in the morning, got there at 1. You want to know why I got there so early? Nobody's, I can't do business at 7.30. My insurance companies, by the way, the stock market is open three hours ahead before we are. They're in the East Coast time. Yep. So I'm calling these companies. I'm doing this. 
And if I got there at 7.30, my agents got there at 9.30. And if I got there at 8.30, these fools will get there at 10.30. And if I got there at 9.30, these guys will get there at 11.30. And if I got there at 11.30, these guys will get there at 2.30. So I'm like, I'm going to set the example. I worked 120 days straight Edgar, without taking one day off. Not one day off that I take off. And you know what's crazy? My son was born March 3rd. We're expecting the baby to be born in April. Premature. Guess how much money I make March, the month that my son's in the hospital. $18,000. In January, we made $6,500. And I had a $4,000 check. I said, look, babe. She's like, what is this? I said, this is what we're getting paid on Friday. She's like, how do you know? I'm like, remember, we had a conversation in October, November. I'm quitting Peach yeah. in October, November, December. And she's like, how do you know? I said, because it's already posted. This is why I'm getting direct deposit on Friday. It's Wednesday. She's like, are you sure? I said, I promise. You know what she did, bro? She put her hands like that. She started crying because we didn't have a car chair for the baby. Her family's got her family didn't want her. She got pregnant. They didn't like me. You know, her family thought I was just doing they nothing. Must, they must hate you now, still. They, oh, I love my family, bro. I love her family. <laughs> I love it. But I had to earn the right. I had to earn of the course. Position, you got to earn the respect. respect. You got to earn the respect. respect. And and um and um she started crying, bro. And, and I made six thousand five hundred that check. And she started crying because we can finally buy her the clothes that she needed for herself. We we're finally buying like things. And then uh, we were not even expecting a baby shower. We didn't have a baby shower because nobody was supporting the pregnancy. And then Jan February, we make twelve thousand five hundred for the first time, which I finally sent fifteen hundred bucks to my dad in Mexico. And then uh, the next month, I made eighteen thousand. Now here, here's see that that's that's huge, man. Like you're doing, you're you know, you're pretty much failing in business for a long time, two years. And then and then you you finally make a little money. And your first instinct is, let me send money to my dad. That was my you second know? Money. That's huge. That's huge because that just says who you are. See, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you my take on retiring our parents. I've always said that that's where me and you probably are the biggest difference is I don't feel like it's my job to retire them necessarily, but I also feel like I shouldn't be a burden, right? So if I can help, I can help. But retiring my parents to me isn't like I have to do that first. You get what I'm saying? That's not a first. Yeah. yeah no, but what I was getting at was I can't, I guess that's what, so... That just says that that's something you've wanted to do since you were a child, goals. right? Yeah, exactly. So that, that's that's not something that because many people will be like, well, he only thinks that way because he has money, right? Okay. So you get what I'm trying to say, yeah, about I guess, this, right? You. Like they're, they're they're saying, oh, well, he didn't think about that before. But if you're broke, 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 broke for two years, and the first time you taste money, you send money to your dad, that that shows that that's always been one of your biggest goals, right? Yeah, bro. Yeah, man. And um, sorry, bro. I'm like just thinking about that moment. Oh, it's, yeah, that's, bro. It's a great story, dude. That's that's amazing just, because many. That's where it's really important, dude. We go back to where 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 this whole thing started. Is it's really important to have the right person with you, right? Because when you broke down with her and said, "Hey, I'm going. I'm going to go be a bartender." For all we know, that could have been the day that you would have failed and completely come back to gone this. a whole different route, right? So uh, you know, you know, Andy Frisella. Yeah. Okay. So he posted the other day, and I and I don't I don't want to quote it, but he said something like. Uh, um, you know, some time from now, you're gonna you're gonna look back to today and think like that's the day my life completely changed, right? And it could be for good or for better. I mean, for for better, or for worse, right? But that day in your life, I think for the rest of your life, is gonna be the day that determined where you are now. Yeah, bro. Yeah, and um, that's why I tell you the spouse is powerful. The spouse is so powerful, bro. And and um. And look, as far as retire, it's not my responsibility to retire because, you see, if you retire and they stop working, they die sooner. Factual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but the thing is, like, my dad, I, I was giving him money, and I, he did it with the intention of him. He, would, he invested that money. He built some cabins, which we now have cabins in Mexico, too. And my dad used that money. He invested it. See, my mom, bro, I haven't retired my mom yet. We give her money. We help her out. But why? Because I told my brother, my mom is 50-something, bro. She needs to still work. Not because I need her to work, but because she needs to keep her brain active. Yeah, and keep young. She needs to stay. But when things, who do you think buys the, my mom the brand new car? Who do you think tries to help her out all the time? Who do you think is giving her, like, making sure, hey, mom, you do this? My brother takes care of my mom. I take care of my dad. I'm proud of my brother. Ricky bought my mom and my dad a brand new car. You know what I mean? And I, I've been giving my dad every, that's, by the way, since that February, I've been giving my dad from 1000 to 1500 bucks a month in Mexico. That's like 20000 Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of money. So is that 100% retire my dad? No. But You're just helping him. I helped. But let me ask you a question. Don't you think my dad's eventually going to get older into his 70s? 100%. Okay. And do you think I'm going to be making more money or less money? More. More. Okay. Let's just say Mayweather. You think his, his mom and his dad have to work? Of no, course not. It's optional. 
So we have to get to the point position where we can either help dramatically or make it optional for them because they come from Rasa where they come from not knowing about index annuities, not knowing about life insurance, not knowing about mutual funds, not knowing about investments, 401ks. They don't know about that stuff, bro. So since nobody ever taught them that, where are they going to depend on? Social security, the cost of living is going up, gas, milk, food, water, water. And then all these, all these people voted for this idiot president that- What's wrong with them? Well, just the fact that he put <laughs> gas prices up and you know he's okay with it. You know, there's a lot of political things that he's doing terrible. It's causing our economy to crash. And guess what happens now? Now our, our parents are the ones eating up all those causes, uh, all those decisions that we made, but not being educated, right? And not that I, I'm not Democrat or Republican. I'm, a, I'm nothing. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Christian. You know what I mean? I believe in God. And that's it. But I will tell you, though, that I believe that my biblical responsibility to see the Muslims and the Indians, bro, they work together and they put their money together. And you know what they do from there? They invest it and then they take care of their parents. And so Muslims do that. Indians do that. The Jews, when one Jew makes money, five, no, six, man, seven. That, that's almost everybody but Mexicans. Exactly. But if we were to work together and collaborate, like think about this, Edgar. You and me had beef seven years ago, five years ago. Because and not that we had beef, but like you, you didn't like PHP, which is okay. You were talking crap, and I'm like, oh yeah, what about this? And we're going at it in Facebook. I yeah, never forget yeah. that, and that's cool. And and but why? But here we are now, right? But we because we're collaborating together. This is the way that we freaking make things happen for your parents, from your parents and my parents. Like you're, bro. I'm so I saw this guy at Costco. I couldn't believe. I'm like, this guy was walking with swagger, posture, and I'm like, and then I I saw his Instagram. I'm like, no wonder this guy's over here with this guy's over here with uh, with Nelson and all these other guys like. In real estate, hell yeah. And I saw you and, and then you and me had a better relationship. I'm like, why? Because you got into entrepreneurship. And I'm like, and look what's crazy about it now. We didn't agree. You didn't. You thought I was in a pyramid scheme. I, I thought you were crazy for wa not wanting to do anything besides music. This guy got started and I don't know. And then I think he was working at in and out if I'm not mistaken, right? And he goes back and still doing in and out. He's not doing insurance. So I'm like, why is this fool going back to in and out right? He ends up doing real estate. Look how badass that we can collaborate together now, build our names up, build our brands up, build, bring it back off of each other and then go out there and accomplish our dreams. And if your goal is to take care of your family, bro, at the end of the day, if we were brothers or cousins and we were a different nationality, we would be making money together. We would all have money together right now. But because we're paisanos and Latinos and we come from culture that doesn't teach us that, we're on our own. And then and then we go, grow, we go and then we're attacking each other and hating on each other. And it's like, yo, and then we and then we're like, damn, never mind. We understand each other. Let's go out there and build it together. So to give a little backstory on, on that whole Facebook thing, uh, it was it was this was a while back. Uh, this is six years ago more mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. yeah it's been a while point being is i i you know a lot you start to hear so when you're i was very very fucking childish i ain't gonna lie um <laughs> everybody and then even just the fact that we were arguing on fucking facebook should tell everybody what this was all about right mm -hmm. point being is that where this all originated was the whole pyramid scheme right so you you are a chairman for people php right yes. people, people helping people mm -hmm. chairman chairman you're responding to one of his posts no so Here's where it goes. So there's a there's a person that we know mutually, right? That still to this day likes to talk shit, and you know, he's a friend of mine. Is he the one that works at Toyota? Yeah. Oh so, my god. <laughs> so so you know, biggest troll. So yeah. So that, but he but look to his to his defense, he just talks shit about everything. Right. Like if you follow this guy, it's like, honestly, I I kind of even get annoyed of the posts, you know. And if you're listening to this, I mean, I just talk a lot of shit. You know, I I'm not talking shit back. I'm just saying that that's who he's always been. So maybe the fact that he was talking shit to you and Ricky or or about PHP was was just that's who he is. I like talking right. shit, right? Okay. Point is that one of my friends commented on there, and then it's just you know it's the cool thing, right? Everyone's talking shit. Let me go put in my fucking two cents, right? And then it just went from there. Now, what I thought at the moment, which I kind of understand now, but what I thought at the moment was, if you remember my comment, was, and I still remember this. I was at Islitas. That's when I would play with there with my grupo. Right. And for even further backstory, I wrote your song, your brother a song. Right. Right. So needless to say, we've always kind of known each other since right. before you were in PHP, since before right. I did any of my entrepreneurship. You know, life, yeah. yeah. You know, 10 years ago, we've known each other, at least known who we are. Right. And so um, I'm at Islitas and I'm playing table to table and playing music. And then two girls that, that I knew, you know, I was single at the time, not that mm -hmm. I, nothing that matters, but Two girls that I knew from from just school or whatever, uh, they're sitting at a table and they're they're eating, they're drinking. I go up, my job there was to sing at the tables, whatever. You guys want a song? 
oh yeah, we know each other, whatever. We end up playing a few songs there. I finish playing, right? And I go up to them and I just say, what's up? I sit down for a little bit, drink a beer. And and one of the girls, she says, hey, where do you want to be in life? And I was like, well, right now, right here, you know, I'm, I'm chilling. And, and they're like, oh, well, like, do you think you're, and, they're, and they gave that, you think you're really going to retire your parents here? And I was like, whoa, this shit took a left turn. Like, I, wow. you know what I mean? Like, uh, I was like, well, I mean, that's not really what I'm thinking about right now, you know? Whatever. To make it a lot shorter story, she pretty much was talking shit about my musical career. At the time, you have to understand, I was 20, 21 years old. So so I, I'm fucking like dreaming, you know? Like, I want to be a musician. I'm writing music. I'm doing all right. My friends are hyping me up. I'm starting to believe maybe I do have a future here. And then comes this broad and bashes on my fucking dreams. Yeah, of course. So, so what, she, what she's trying to do is say, come join us, mm. right? Like you're not gonna do, try attract bees with vinegar. She she, she literally, literally was like, you know, to be honest with you, you're never gonna do anything here. Like you really think you'll be a musician? How much money can you possibly make? You know, I just started at PHP and this and this and that, whatever. Wow. And okay, so then I got I got a sour taste in my mouth. And what we ended up clearing up with Ricky before I even cleared it up with you was why would I talk shit about something, especially being you guys, mm -hmm. when just because it was two bad apples. Right. You know what I mean? Every tree has bad apples. Right. You can't control every apple on that tree. Right. What you could do is try to 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 instruct them or at least, you know, give them the right path so that they didn't do shit like that. But like I said, you go to Walmart, you go to McDonald's, you go to any big franchise or even any small business that has employees, there's going to be bad people there. Hell yeah. Right? Just like there's bad salespeople that don't have the best intentions for the client. There's bad people everywhere. Lack of experience. Too. So, so yeah, of course. And and they were probably new because they don't you even know, do it anymore. You're stop, you're stop, you're also, I was like 24, 25 <laughs> trying to teach these guys all for rough things, bro. It's not like I could, oh yeah, I got the keys to success. I just had a dream in the work ethic. No, 100%. You know I mean? But you see, and then these girls don't even, three months later, aren't even there anymore. Right. Right. So needless to say, they were nobodies right there. But it impacted me because she literally bashed on my shit. And at wow, the time, I'm just right. a dreamer. So then- I go log on on Facebook a couple of days later and I see this fucking thing, fuck PHP, their fucking pyramid scheme, their this right. and this and that. And so what does my child, child, my childish mind automatically do? Yeah, man, they're fucking stupid, whatever. And I start talking shit. And then I remember Ricky's comment was like, damn, bro, I didn't expect this from you. You right. know what I mean? And then when I read that again, I'm a child and I reply back, I'm talking shit. Ye years later, I kind of reach out to Ricky. You know, I, I feel a little bit more mature. It's probably three, four years yeah. later. And I just tell him, like, hey, dude, I'm sorry about that on the real. I'm glad you're doing good. He had already joined you guys. I think yeah. at this Facebook incident, he had just started with you yeah, guys. Yeah, he had just started. It was very, very new. So then, um, long story short, we clear the air. And now we're here, right? Right. Um, we just, I just went through a lot. I summed it up as fast as right. I could. What, what I'm getting at, though, is like... That was me being very childish. Even the comments that were said on there were stupid, vice versa, you know? Uh, and, and in regards to, like, making it personal. Yeah. Right? So we could have said, and we'll clear this up right now, it's a pyramid scheme, right? So oh, why, why is it a pyramid scheme? Well, I could have given my answer. I'm talking about back then. Let's play devil's advocate. Yeah. So why is, Talk, it, a, why is well, it a pyramid ask, scheme? But let me, let me ask you a question. Break down for me what a pyramid scheme is. And why, like, why did you think back then, would you have different knowledge now because you're in solar and you have your lender and banking, which you're yeah. prolific at, right? So you understand now infrastructure of distribution of business and sales and, and marketing and development of agencies and building, right? Even though solar, you would, you're building an organization, it's not an agency, but it's still an agency yeah. of business, right? So you understand it now, but let's play devil's advocate. Let's go back to your day when you're immature. Why would it, why did it look like a pyramid scheme? Let, let's talk about the ugly. So the pyramid scheme in in my eyes then was, and I think in many people's eyes now, because mm -hmm. uh, it's still a thing, right? Yeah. For for people saying shit like that, oh, a right? thousand percent, it's always gonna happen. Okay. So what it was was, okay, Alejandro's gonna recruit me. Fine. Right. Every dollar I make, he owns a part of it. Okay. And then I recruit Adrian. Okay. Every dollar Adrian makes, I own a part of it, and you own a part of it. Okay. And then Adrian rec uh, recruits Gus. Uh huh. Adrian makes money off Gus. I make money off Adrian and Gus. You make money off me, Adrian and Gus. Right. Right. Okay. And so it keeps going. Okay. So the mentality I had then, right, was, and then I'll let you give your take on it yeah, before that's, I that's, elaborate. That's, I want to I want to understand how people think. What I thought then was, for one, I was a fucking child. Right. Right. 
I had no knowledge. I had no financial literacy. Right. Right. And other than that, I had no entrepreneurship or, or, um, I guess I did have entrepreneurship goals, but I didn't know. Right. Like you said, it was a subconscious thing. Okay. So at the time I'm thinking, fuck that. I'm not going to work for a place that is going to take my money for the rest of my life. Right. <laughs> right. That, that's the thought. That's right. what you think. Right. And so obviously then you grow up and you figure out what you're about to explain. Okay. Right. But like, kind of like you said, it goes back to your subconscious mind. Right. So since we were young, we've always been told and trained to, you know, go to school, go to college and get a, get a salary job. And that's okay to us, right? But I know you're about to go into details of it. But when you think about it from, I guess, you know, from that PHP level, you know, me even trying to, you know, uh, go in there and, and try it for myself, right? It was always like my subconscious mind was okay with, you know, salary job, but not into like the entrepreneur side of it. That right. So let's let's break this down about making like, first of all, this person makes money off of me. This person makes money off of me. Okay. My, my question to you is this, and, and let's break this down. Uh Okay, I'll put it to this way. And I'm sorry to say this. I think it's stupid how real estate is structured. Let me tell you why I think it's stupid. Not the house, not the buying houses, the business side of this. Yeah, I think being, being an agent. An agent. I think it's stupid as hell. Let me tell you guys why. Okay, let, let, let's play devil's advocate here. This is going to be fun for everybody who's in real estate and everybody who's in insurance. Okay. Hold on, guys. This just, is gonna be good. Hold on to this. This is going to be a good one. This is good. Aquí, aquí la sopa se va aclarar. Okay? And... So the question is this. Let's just say that Gus, Gus recruits you into real estate. He's the broker, right? He's the broker. You don't know nothing besides how to play music. You come with drinking habits, bad association, and you got a booty call out there that always distracts you and she's playing your heart. And she's over here. She's not sure she wants to be with you or not, but you're so conscious. You're so in love with her. Even though she's just a booty call, but the truth is you want to be with her. So you then you have baby mama. Then not, you have your mom who has telling you that you have to have a guaranteed job. Then you have a culture that doesn't teach you nothing about money. Then you have a bad habit of sleeping in. Not that you have all these issues. I'm just yeah, 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 yeah. I'm giving you a personal hypothetically. Thing. Hypothetically, right? Then then you Gus actually is, just explained to me though. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> <My bad. laughs> the Arvin comes out sometimes, right? <laughs> just kidding. So then um so then Gus is now making not not that he's super successful. Let's say he's making 30 grand, 40 grand, but he's doing it on his own, which is respect. Because, yeah, somebody might be having an $80,000 paying job, but that's a foundation that was already established without that employee. The employee stepped into that position and got those 80 grand. Not that he developed the foundation to, of that business. Mm -hmm. Two completely different human beings. An entrepreneur is making 30 grand a year by his own efforts, his own foundation, his own sacrifice. Okay? So Gus is doing something right. Either 30 grand, 20 grand, or 50 grand, or 100 grand, or 200 grand. He has to teach you something and rewire everything, teach you your stop, help you stop having your bad habits, not to sleep in, give you the books. Then the girl breaks your heart and you're distracted and you disappear for a whole week and he's training you and he calls you to the office like, let's see, let's role play. And bro, you can't be doing this. He spends one-on-one -on -one time with you, right? And it takes him, let's just say it takes him six months to a year of development. You eventually start dressing better. You eventually start talking better. You eventually start going to the gym. You're working on yourself. You, this girl tries to come back to your life. You're like, no, you know what? I realize that I can never marry you and have wife material with you. You're not it. You're, you're growing. You're progressing, right? And then you start making money. And Gus gets paid on the first 10 sales in real estate with you. Let's say he goes 50-50, hypothetically, right? I don't know how real estate works. But then... You guys are building an agency in real estate. You just, you just pours heart, sweat, and tears into you. He had your back on the lowest. There were times you had no money for gas, and he got you. There were times you guys would have to go to dinner, and he would pay for you, even though you had no money. And he, you never say nothing that you had no money, but he just took care of it. And you're like, damn, I'm so glad he played because I was looking at the menu. Yeah. Look, look, do I sound like I was poor at one time? Oh, I completely No, yeah, that happens all the time. Okay. So, so then Gus develops you, bro, and you guys are crushing it together. And then... You said, you know what? And by the way, guess who also showed up? Nelson shows up. I don't know him, but I've heard of him. I like his content. Okay? Homeboy shows up. And you guys are building this agency. And you guys are developing. You guys are doing this. You guys are even start a podcast. Eventually, you say, man, but you know what? This, this guy is making 10% more on me on every sale that I'm making. I'm like, for now, you know what? I want to start my own brokerage firm. You go across the street. Become your own broker. Now you guys have to break your partnership. He can't make money with you. You guys can't make money too. Now you guys are each other competition. Why the hell should I teach you business? Teach you everything? I shouldn't. All thing I should teach you is how to freaking sell. Because if I teach you anything else from that, you're going to go across the street, open up a different company and take, and guess what you're taking? You're taking 
you're taking as well. You're taking, sorry, it's my wife calling, right? It's you're taking, not only you're taking uh, Nelson, you're taking Homeboy, you're taking the two, three other people because they're closer to you because they couldn't stand Gus no more because Gus was always on their ass now and, and you have a better relationship with it because you weren't always bad cop. You were always kind of like the good cop. Yeah, yeah. So they go with you. Gus now loses 30, 40% of his income. Now you guys are rivals. I think that's stupid as hell. Does that make sense? Like for me, I'm like, why the hell would I even develop these guys? I might as well just teach them sales and never teach them business. That's my concept though of it. Okay. I don't know much about brokerage and real estate. How about we do this? My brother makes more money than I do. Let me tell you exactly how much Ricky makes more than I do. Okay. He makes half a million dollars a year more than I do. That's if you guys want to do the math, that's 41 grand more a month than I do a month. Is that fair? Okay. <clears throat> When I recruited my brother, we went at it multiple times because he's older, I'm younger. He's alpha. He left me when I was 15. I didn't see my brother again, like very, probably three, four, five times in, since 15 or 21. We grew, we're two completely different human beings. He's a freaking old for work, me too. We're two, two different humans. Yeah, you can see that. Right? He's now seeing me make money and he's respecting that fact that I'm now making money. April 1st, he hits me up and says, Alejandro, how does his business work? I'm seeing, he saw me make 18,000, 12,000, 6,500. He says, let's sit down. I show him the business. I recruit my brother now, I'm, but I'm sitting there showing him what I'm doing. I say, carnal, you're a, look, bro, you're my older brother. You're strong and you're a very powerful man. But here, I built this agency without you, carnal. I'm going to need you to do me a favor. Here, I'm not your little brother. I'm your mentor. I'm your coach. Do you trust me? He says, of course, you're my brother. I said, no, no. He's like, do you trust me? Trust me. Like, of course, bro. I know you'll never screw me over. I said, no, no, no. Do you trust me as your mentor? That means whatever I say has to go and you're going to hate me at times. That's big. No, Ricky's that's big. Huge. Ricky's that's massive. Huge. He's like, he's like, takes a deep breath because now he knows that the question's deeper. In other words, he's saying, will you jump when I say jump? Yeah. yeah, run yeah. When I say run you're no longer my bigger brother. Hell no. Not here. He says, he takes a minute. He says, I get what you're saying. I'll be coachable to you, Karnan. I said, let's do this. He comes on board. First day as an entrepreneur, like two weeks later, he's going to do the business full time. I said, let's go to the office at eight. I get out of the, I get out of the shower. I get out, I'm going into the shower. It's about 7.30, so we can be at the office by 8.30 or eight at least. Ricky's getting ready for the gym. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm going to the gym. I said, bro, it's your first day as an entrepreneur full time. You got to go to the office and get there early. He says, look, bro, I've run multiple businesses. I don't even be told what to do. You understand me? I said, You've never run this business, bro. He says, I don't care what business it is. I can run any business. I said, this, I'm like, bro, we have to be there early. You understand me? He says, bro, if I don't feel good, I'm not going to do good. I'm going to the gym. It's not my first rodeo, all right? And I'm like, you know what? Do whatever that you feel like doing. And I close the door and I start showering. I'm pissed, bro. Because he's supposed, to be, my, he's supposed yeah. to be my student. Well, guess what, guess what happens? Respect to my brother. He's big, by the way. I come out of the shower and I'm getting, and I go into the room. I don't see him. I'm getting dressed. I'm putting on my clothes. I come outside. I'm buttoning on my shirt. Guess what he's doing? Getting dressed. He's getting dressed too. He shows up to office 10 minutes after I do. Ricky made his first month in May. He made 10 grand. What's my point? Me and my brother, for months, I had to teach him, coach him. I was like, bro, practice on me. We would, we would run appointments from 8, 9 in the morning to 7 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night. What do you think I did every single night from, a te from 10 o'clock at night? What do you think I did with my brother and all my agents? Guys, are you guys all done? Yeah, are you guys done with your appointments? It's 9 o'clock. Yeah, everybody in my office, we're going to role play. What do you mean we're going to role play? You got to practice a presentation on me. Night after night, guess how, low, uh, how old Alexander is? Alexander is one month old. My firstborn, one month old. I'm working to 11 o'clock at night, training them over, 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 over. And guess what? When training was done, to about one, almost 12, 12, 30 o'clock at night after an hour and a half of training, almost two hours, three hours sometimes. Now it's 12, 30. I'm tired. I want to go back to my wife. I haven't had dinner. I'm beat. I'm exhausted. I woke up at freaking seven, seven o'clock, six 30. And I have, you know, and then guess what happens? Then my agent says, Hey, can I talk to you? How do you do it to talk to your parents that you want to become successful in life? How, how do you do it when your boyfriend broke up with your heart? That's a how six do, hour. Oh you. my God. And you think I was like, hey, we'll talk about this tomorrow. I'm tired. Ni madres. These people are depending on me because they have to go to work the next day and face these realities. Yeah. So guess what I did? Sit there and mentor them. Mentor them. Mentor them. Mentor them. Coach them. Practice with them. Got them licensed. Use my resources. Use my money. I'll go buy food. And all of a sudden I have to do food. And these guys haven't ate all day. And I'm like, here, take my food too. My wife cooked. Hey, you guys want some too? Yo me quedo sin comer porque le estoy dando comer a estos guys. I'm investing time, energy, everything into these guys. My brother makes ten, my brother makes that year, his first year makes like 110 grand, something like that. 
I make 161,000. My brother today makes a million dollars a year. You want to know how much the insurance agencies pay me a, m- a month. My brother makes a million dollars a year, a plus, a million dollars plus a year. Guess how much the insurance companies pay me a year on just my brother's agency? A quarter million dollars. Now, a question on that. Does that quarter million dollars come from his pay? What do you mean from his pay? Yeah, like he makes a million. Hell Does no. Does he now make 750? No, hell no. The insurance companies pay me all on the top of it. So it's override. It's override. So let's say the sell, he, me and my brother are in the same contract. Let's just say that he's at 90%, I'm at 90%, hypothetically, of whatever sell margin yeah. of the profit. So the insurance companies will still pay me another 15% on top of his 90%. See, we're both at 90%. But then they'll pay me 15% of everything that they generate. You can see, the, the thing is this. These insurance companies, they're billion-dollar companies. Let me give you guys a, a, a bigger uh, uh, idea of how insurance works in this industry of pyramid scheme, which is crap. Let me ask you a question. Every car by law and every house by law has to have insurance. Factual? Factual. Okay. The skyscrapers you guys see in New York, Chicago, LA, the Twin Towers, do they have insurance? I would assume so. Commercial insurance, 1,000 have to have insurance. Twin Towers had insurance. What about the bank and the money inside the bank? What does it have? Insurance. Then who has more money? The banks or an insurance company? An insurance company. By a mile. 401ks, 457 is mutual funds, Roth IRAs, traditional IRAs, uh, all these different accounts. Where do you? Who do you think is managing those accounts and those accounts come from? I'm assuming insurance. The insurance company. So who controls the wealth of America? Insurance. The insurance companies do. Can I ask you guys a question? Who's the average agent? of people in the insurance industry. And by the way, you're looking at PHP. Take PHP out of the spectrum. What's the average age of people in the insurance industry? Any idea? Age? 45. I would say over 45, 50. 65 to 65 years old. Okay, and you want to know what the national, yep. You want to know what the average, what their nationality is or race is? Ethnicity? You want to know what it's? White. How the hell is a 65-year-old white guy going to go talk to your Tia Guadalupe? Yeah. You feel me? Okay, let me give you a different perspective. Your dad's been working in this country his whole life. Your mom, let's just say hypothetical, not your dad. Your dad's working his whole life. Your mom's a stay-at-home mom. She didn't go to school. Your dad didn't go to school. He's a mayordomo in the fields. He makes five grand a month, okay? Your mom depends on her. They're already older. Your kids are already out of the house. Boom, your dad dies. No life insurance because nobody ever taught him. No retirement. He had a little bit of savings in the bank. Bought a little house in Mexico they can't go to because he has a 19 number. That he's eventually going to do something out there if he wants to because I don't know how the hell he's going to do it. Very traditional? Yes? Yep, very. Okay. Now that woman, that man's husband dies, what does that woman do? She's going to go be a burden on the kids? Oh, we have to move my mom in. Uh, we're going to have to move in with mom. And now those swag that's there. And this, it's your mom's always, oh my God, bro, right? Okay. What happens when a guy like me Got my license. I believe in life insurance. I told you guys since the beginning. Yeah. Insurance company says, we can't talk to Tio Federico. We can't talk to Tio Federico. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to contract an agency. And this agency, we're going to contract this agency. This agency can go sit down with these families. We're going to, look, we're not going to get these guys licensed. All we're going to do is we're going to give them the contracts. They're in charge of getting people licensed, getting people trained, building agencies, and bringing, make sure they bring good quality business. They get a guy like me. I walk into a house now. Your dad's sitting there. I know about insurance now. I know about money. My mentors invested time into me. Okay? I sit down with that man. That man buys a half million dollar life insurance policy, which happened to me. That man two years later dies. I come to your family and I deliver a half a million dollar check. Does your mom need to depend on your brothers and sisters or you? Hell no. Does your mom's house now paid off fully? Yes. Can she retire? Yes. Oh, by the way, if that man had a heart attack and didn't die, the insurance company pays him 80% of that policy while he's alive. $400,000. So, by the way, 72% of the medical bills in America, 72% of people in America have to use their life savings for medical bills. So imagine all of us right here, 72% of our family is going to work for 30, 40, 50 years in this country, save up money, and then boom, medical bills are going to take over and they're going to have to use their money for medical bills. 72% of America. I'm the guy that if shit happens and he dies, there's money for that family. If he gets sick, he can use that money tax-free for medical bills and for a house and pay off all and even go to Mexico on vacation with that money. If there's no guys like me, our raza keeps staying in the mud when shit happens. You guys pick up like I'm the guy. So if everyone calls me a parent, and I'm sorry that the insurance companies pay me royalties on all the sales. <laughs> I'm sorry that I trained a badass team. Are you gonna you gonna tell me my brother's he has a Lamborghini Urus? You think my brother's pissed that for every million he makes, they pay me a quarter million and it's not costing him nothing? He's probably mad as fuck, bro. Oh, he must be pissed. <laughs> no. and, and do you think the teachers that work under his umbrella that make a hundred grand part-time, you think they're pissed that they're making a hundred grand part-time? No, of course not. So, so would it bother you? Would it bother you like this? And it doesn't always work like do you make money, it doesn't necessarily work like that. 
it will work like look let's just imagine you got your license bro and and you know you get you at the lowest tier kind of like solar right there's tiers right yep. and let's just say you're at the lowest tier and you didn't really do anything but you got your license and you connected with a few families and you assured them would it bother and this guy really like yo man are you getting your license he's on top of he's not a big leader he's brand new but he's just making sure you show up and you get your license bro would it bother you bro if you made 10 grand and this guy happened to make a thousand dollars would that piss you off of course not okay would it piss you off that I made 500 bucks that uh, off of the 10 grand that he made? I didn't take it from not. you. Of course not. Okay. Did we all eat? Yep. Damn, I think we sound like Jews. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Now it sounds crazy, huh? I didn't expect that one. That was cool. now, now we sound like the Muslims and the Indians. I'm sorry we're all making money together as we should. Yeah, for sure. I don't want to make this full money. So let me just stay broke. Imagine this. Imagine a good looking girl. She's beautiful, right? And you see her in a class and she's gorgeous. You look at her, she has nice toes. I'm sorry, that's a big one. You're a toe guy? You're a toe guy? Girls has nice, nice toes, bro. You know what I mean? I'm sorry, that's just a thing for me. She has nice hair, right? She's morenita. She's light-skinned, whatever the case might be, your taste. You know, she's a nice figure. She's beautiful. And she's to herself. And you're like, hey, can I borrow a pencil? And she looks back and she's like, I don't have one. And she's like, okay. And you really like her. And you like, and then with your friends, you're like, man, I can't stand her ass. She's conky. She's, she's stuck up. I asked her for a pencil and I know she had an extra one. She didn't want to give me. She's so stupid. She's a teacher's pet. She's this, she's that. Look at her. She's a cheerleader and she doesn't even know how to like do the cheer right. Like she's like, look, look, look at her dad. Her dad is, looks like an asshole. Look at <laughs> Think about you're talking crap about this girl. Right? Yeah, you know her. And you don't even know her. But you, but low key, what do you want? You want her? You want, you want her. Okay. Yeah. Do you imagine this? And she doesn't hear you say it all the time, but she's caught you say some things. And all of a sudden, you're like, but I really want her. Do you really think she's going to come and be attracted to you? Not. She's going to hate your guts. That's the haters in success. When you see somebody else winning and becoming successful, you're like, ese güey se cree mucho. This fool's like this. This fool doesn't know the difference between the, the, and there. They don't know the difference on two, two, how to spell. This guy doesn't know how to do math. This guy's like this. This guy's arrogant. This guy this. This guy has a stupid haircut. This guy's fat. This guy's this. This guy this. He's cocky. He drives beat up cars. His car's salvage. It doesn't that. Imagine people who hate on success, but then they want success. You think success comes to those idiots? Of course not. Hell no. You can't hate on success and expect for you to have success. It doesn't work like that. Now, on that same topic, I like that you brought that up because um, I know we're probably running low on time. You said you had an appointment. Uh, it, they told me they're moving into a different night. Okay, awesome. So um, money is bad, right? I'm sure you've witnessed that somewhere along the lines, right? Um, in the sense of people think that, you know, people think money's bad. If you, you said earlier in, in our, in our tradition, if you bring up money, you're an asshole or, or it's from, it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's part of that. It's it's you shouldn't exactly. be bringing up money at the dinner table at barbecues. You never bring up how much you make. If you ever talk to somebody about how much you make, they take it bad. This fool thinks he's a fucking shit. Right. How do we teach people that money's not bad? Okay. Um, let me ask you a question. I, I, by the way, you guys are great guys. You guys are good people. He's about to talk shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know how they always I'm say? He's prepping us. I love you, I love you, but... <laughs> Let me ask you this question then. Um, if they give you a million dollars right now, you had a million dollars right now that they gave it to you, and you're making a million dollars a month, and if you're an asshole, if you're an asshole, would you be an asshole when you're broke? You're of an course. Asshole. You're an asshole when you're broke. If you, make, if you have a million dollars a month, are you still an asshole? You're still an asshole. Yep. So money, and I'll quote Patrick but David, money just makes you more of what you are. Right? That's right. Okay. If you're a good person, let me ask you a question. If you're a good person and you care for people and you have a good heart and your heart is in the right place and they give you a million dollars a month, would you do good with that money? Of course. You would do more of it. You would do mm -hmm. more good with that money, right? So when people say money is bad, it's the same thing of talking crap about the girl. You, you, do you, let me ask you a question. People, their parents live in, uh, have Medi-Cal, right? Do you know that's government assistance? Do you think that they're going to give you the best of the best? Hell no. Yeah. So if your mom is costing the government a few thousand dollars a month, don't you think the doctors are like, yo, this is good. But then the, the truth is the government's like, let her die. We can't give her all the coverage either. So what would happen? Would you, with your money, would you take care of your mom? Of course, of course. Uh, they would, they would have no whatsoever. So no. You would take care of your mom. You would, you would give her the best doctors. You would keep her alive, right? Okay. So if you hate on money, guess what? All the charities that take care of all these kids in Africa, all these kids in the Wish Foundation, 
When people have money, they're the ones that give the most. Guys, I've met people who are extremely successful millionaires, and they're the most coolest, chillest people you're ever going to know. Look, bro, you've been around money now, editor. You've seen it. Let me, let, me, let me give you a quote that I heard. I don't even know from who it was. Somebody on Bradley's podcast said, if you think money's bad or you don't like money, you haven't given enough of it away. Yes. Bro, people with money are like, they're happier. They're not mad. What are they pissed off about? <laughs> and they really have, the, the money doesn't fulfill them no more. If I make another 40 grand this month or 50 grand a month, I'm already used to it. What am I like? I'm going to get all excited. I'm like, no. I'm cool. Whatever. It's nonchalant for me that I'm making money again. Now, would you, on that comment, would yeah. you say that you're already living the life that you wanted to live? No. I make 40, 50, 60 bands a month. I'm still not happy. Not that I'm not, I'm happy in my life, but I'm like, yo. Not content. I'm not content because like, I, I want to do more for my family. And I, but at the same time, it's like, I'm, uh, but it, it's a very interesting question because anyone would be like, man, I would kill for make 40 grand a month. Right. But the, the thing is like, yo, because I guess because I have partners who are making like 120 grand, 200 grand a month. So it's like, I you're in, like, you're in the bigger room. I, I feel like a poor, I feel like a poor kid that I need to go fund me when I'm around these guys. Does that make sense? So it's like, yo, but the truth is this though, like, like if you're making money, bro, you're going to do good with that money. Like, you know how happy I am that I help on my dad, I help on my mom, that I help on my suegros. You know what I mean? Like that makes me happy, bro. And if, and if I had a lot more money, I would help out a lot more people. Does that make sense? Of and I do help a lot of, of people, but these charities are events are these charities and all these nonprofit organizations are ran by people who have money that give it away. Take all that's away from them. They can't help nobody. Yeah. So the concept of them, people are bad that have money. It's, it's a concept that comes from poverty. That comes from third world countries that come from like greed. Does that make sense? Like yeah. how you going to hate on somebody because they worked hard. It's like this bro. They say deport these Mexicans back to Mexico and we get offended. Why? But they work hard. They pay taxes. You know, they do this. They don't even get tax returns because they have an ITIN or a TIN and DACA and this and this and that. So what are you saying? Because they work hard, they earn the position to live in America here illegally? Are we saying that? We are saying that, right? Yeah. Okay. How can you be mad because some paisa figured out how to make 50 grand a month? You, get, you, want, you think he's a bad person when he came with no shoes, no food, no English? We're going to hit on that fool? We can't. So isn't that controversial? Yeah. We expect to benefit off of America, but, but then they, they no, don't depart because they earned the right. Successful people earn the right as well. You're going to be mad at my kid because I'm successful and I pass well to my kid. My kid invests that money, makes it bigger. You're going to be mad at my kid. Oh, it's equal to papi. Bro, I'm making my kid work too. You have no idea how much I make my kid work this right now. He's six years old. You best believe when he takes over a few of the companies. You best believe. Hate on my son. I bet you this fool works circles around you. I bet you if you were my son, you wouldn't last even a day in his shoes. I had a dad who had money. Bro, I, he slayed me. So I don't have the right to work hard? Bro, I couldn't play sports in high school. You want to know why? Because my dad was making me work. All these fools playing the football. Pads. Oh, yeah. They're walking with the cleats and the lockers and they're playing soccer and they're playing football. I wish I could have played sports. I, I wasn't allowed to because my dad was making me work. During the summer, we would go to Mexico, yes, but I also worked for two months as well in the middle of summer being a kid. So yeah. I've been working for free. I'm, I'm 32 years old. I've been working since I was in construction since I was seven. 1997 is when real estate started popping off and buying houses, flipping them, and selling them. How do I know? Because I remember being seven years old working construction. I've been working for how many years and now I'm not supposed to become successful at my age? Bullshit. I earned my right. Just like the Mexicans that jumped the border and Guatemalans and Salvadorans earned the right to be in America, I earned my right to be rich too. Hell yeah. My boy. I think, that's the, I think that's the most I've ever used that button, man. <laughs> a lot to unpack there, bro. You give a lot of great fucking perspectives that sometimes we... We really need to hear, and especially a lot of the messages that you're, that you're pushing out for people who are, are in our shoes, you know, or in my shoes, your shoes, out of your shoes, like, you know, because everyone's in different paths of their lives. And, and regardless, that message is just so, you know, it hits home to many people. Yeah, bro. I, look, man, the last thing I want to tell you guys is this. I walked into a man's house one day. He's from Michoacan. And uh, uh, the daughter didn't want me to meet him. He's like, my dad's crazy. I don't want you to meet him. Because in our business, when we recruit somebody, we're like, look, we know... <laughs> By the way, can I ask you a question before I go into the story? What up? Do friends and family buy from you right away? Fuck no. Okay, wait, no? They don't, right? <laughs> Fuck no. So, so wait a minute. So I get hated on PHP 
Because we tell agents, hey, you're brand new. Go introduce your business to your friends and family. Show them what we do. And that way they don't have to go to State Barn Farmers because they're not going to give you the best products. We're going to, we have better services and more affordable and better services. Go show them because if not, they're going to buy insurance and buy these resources from somebody else. And since you're not licensed, we're going to train you. And if they want to buy insurance, we're going to sell it to them because either way, they're not going to buy from you. So they just use this as training. And the more you learn about this, then whenever we have new recruits, you can go to the clients with them because you learned the system of how to sell and everything, right? Because we know that people are not going to sell in their market. Your cousins, your uncles, am I right that your friends and family don't buy they from you? They will not buy from you. They don't well, buy from you. Obviously, some, but yeah, some out of out of a hundred clients. How? Okay, let me give you as a ten answer. family members. I think you get two. Okay, I, can I give you as a perspective? I've insured billions of dollars of life insurance with my agency. I've done a loan myself over two hundred million dollars of active life insurance policies. Okay, I've insured thousands of like a few thousand in my career of clients. Guess how many of them are my family members? Out of out of a few thousand, let's just say a thousand. How many of you are my members? Maybe 20, 15, 10, 10. You know, when they finally bought during COVID, when everybody was dying and getting sick. <laughs> and it was more expensive at that time to buy? I mean, it, no, same no, it was the same price. Same price. So, so, so the truth is, so would you guys agree that friends and family don't buy? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so the last are, ones to buy. The last ones to buy. You have to earn your stripes before they ever buy. And it yeah. took me like five years from my, or my stripes, six years. My question to you guys is this then. So are we going to build our success off of our friends and family? No, definitely no. not. No, we can grow the word. You could probably grow your name out there a little bit through them. You know, they'll probably send you a referral or two, but yeah. you're not going to make your money off of that, right? Okay. So just to clear that in the air, people are like, oh, they make you insure your friends and family. Yeah, because your friends and family are not going to buy from you either way. Dumb, dumb. Let at least at least train you with your own freaking family. And maybe if you get good, they'll trust you and send you some referrals in the future. They're not going to buy from you. Get it over your head already. Fair? Okay. Yep. Perfect. So then... I go into this girl's house. She's like, let's go meet your dad. She's like, no, no, no. My dad's crazy. My dad's crazy. I walk into his house. She's like, fine, let's go meet him. I walk into his house. Great, man. From Michoacan, Chaparito. Me dice, ching me vienes a robar. <laughs> and I said, todo, señor. He's like, what? I'm like, I'm just kidding. Can I sit down? He's like, yeah, you can sit down. Ya estás aquí. <laughs> <laughs> I sit down. Beautiful house, by the way. He starts talking crap to me for like two hours, just like an hour, but just drilling into me talking crap yes they're throwing and just talking crap about my business and i'm like because his daughter's working with me right after a while i'm just like listening to him he's talking crap about me i'm laughing because if you guys can tell i'm not a sensitive guy bro i'm like bro i grew up with ricky i grew up in the oil fields and i had a crazy ass then i have some deals from michoacan and they talk crap 24 7 right so i'm like yo i'm laughing the guy is cracking up because I'm laughing and he's disrespecting me and I'm hella, I'm laughing, bro. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm having a good ass time, bro. You know those things that make fun of you just like, you don't want to be disrespectful. You should just shut up and you just laugh. Yeah. Right? Like your own joke of you getting roasted, right? You're like, whatever. So I'm laughing. He's laughing. And then after a while, he's like telling me his life story, which was respect, bro. I'm like, I'm blown away by this guy, right? And then um, I asked him a question. I said, sir, can I ask you a question? Like, yeah, I'm like, the day that, I mean, you told me you want to leave some houses for your daughters and your son. He's like, yeah. And your grandkids. I'm like, yeah. You told me you build this business from the ground up. He's like, yeah. I'm like, which of your kids can run the business like you the day you die? He says, no, todos son de huevones. You know they're not, bro, but you know the dad's Yeah, yeah, yeah. Todos son de huevones. And he said, on Instagram, like the talking crap. I'm like, okay. Like, so, el día que usted se muera, ¿quién va a correr? Entonces, ¿qué va a pasar con el negocio? What's going to happen to the business? Yeah. He says, so, let me get this straight. You jump the border. I told him in Spanish. You jump the border. You come to America. You build a business. And the day that you die, your whole business is going to die with you because no one can run it. Because nobody can run it. I said, sir, why the hell did you even come? They said, ¿por qué viste bien entonces? Se había quedado, mira, mija, se había quedado en México mejor, ordenar unas vacas, comer unos tacos y comer, y mira, México está en la chula, ¿para qué diablos se vino? El día que se se muere, el negocio va a morir con usted. The business is going to die either way. You know what he looks at me and says? Which one should I F and buy? And que chingo debería comprar? And he looks at the three plans and he says, no me gusta esa, no me gusta, dame esta. It was the first time, bro, he got a big policy. My first big client. You know how much money I made? It was my first time making 12 grand in a week. My first time. He would come to my office. I insured him through one of the companies. He's like, let me see where my money's at because there's some policies you can dump in money. Mm -hmm. It can grow. You can pull money out and still pay your interest on all the amount even though you pulled money out, which, which is tight. And he's like, I don't understand me dinero. I said, he would come every month. Let me see on the summit dinero because he thought I was scamming him. <laughs> yeah. So I'll have to call the insurance company. I'm brand new too. I'm like like two years, three years, two years and a half into the business. So I'm like calling the insurance company. Mira, mira. Oh, see, see. Okay. Yes, number okay. Yes, number okay. So we'll go through the statements together. Real smart man. 
for like that, he has been like that for like six months and eventually just gave up and says, okay, this is legit. This is good. I'm like, okay, he drooling for six months. My wife is having our baby and 2000, she's pregnant in 2017, 2018. I said, hey, señor, um, un favor. ¿Qué pasó, Alejandro? Dije, ¿me deja hacer mi baby shower en su casa? And he says, sí, claro que sí. I throw my baby shower in the house, bro. We become friends. I'm going to tell you the whole story because you guys might know who it is. Two years later, bro, my friend, my client, Got murdered. Him, and um, him? Yeah, he got murdered, bro. And um, they murdered his daughter, too. And um, I remember I was in Virginia. I had opened up an office by Maryland in Virginia, and I received the call. And I, 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 I'm like, there's no way. I'm like, why would they want to murder him? Like, he's such a good man. You know what I mean? And and I and then I fly back, and um, and I go to the, uh, to the what is it called? The, when the whole family gets together. And it's not the funeral, but it's like. Oh, the uh, viewing. The viewing. So I go to the viewing and then there's two caskets in the living room and I walk in and uh, I see the wife and, uh, and I, and I, and I'm crying because at that time I we became friends and the daughter was also working with me and I'm, and I'm, and I sit, and I, I can't help it. She's sitting down, everybody's rezando and she's sitting, the mom's sitting down crying and I, and I sit and I go on my knees and I hug her and I'm crying, bro. I'm crying. I'm hugging her. And I, and I told her, I said, um, I said, I know nothing's gonna, nothing can change what happened, but your husband loved you. I said, your husband loved you. I said, and God put me here for a reason. You're going to be okay. This is why God, this is why I was in your house because he loved you and he wanted to make sure you were taken care of. I'm crying. I'm bawling, bro. I'm bawling, but I'm crying and talking and trying to tell her like, like there to be okay. Even though like, what do you do? How do you replace her husband and her daughter, bro? Like yeah, there's no you can't. And it was my first client dying, bro. It was my first client dying. And, and, and I'm hugging her and then, um, and I, I'm crying. And then, you know, and a few, probably about, probably about a week or two weeks later, the insurance company makes sure that there's no fraud. And I deliver a big check. I'm not going to say what happened, but just know that that family is very well taken care of. Okay. At that point, it hit me. I said, if Jake from State Farm with the khakis would have walked into this house, that fool would have been flying his ass out of that house in two minutes. It takes people like us to understand Raza to help them out. Yep. You're in real estate. They trust you, bro. That's why you do good. This is why clients send you referrals, compa. Because if you do good to clients, they're always going to take your Look, if you're not doing the best in the beginning, it's because your lack of experience. I get it, but you got to master your craft. You might not know the best, but you got to correct it and be better, right? That's why it's so important. I, I respect you guys because you guys are mastering, trying to be better. We're doing a podcast, right? This is why, bro, we got to take her and become prolific with money, understand investing, understand real estate, understand buying houses, understanding how insurance and interest works. And, and, and we need to understand fees. We need to understand these things because if we get this down, we can make it simple and reason with the rasa who are stubborn. That client died on me, bro. It was the first client died on me. You know what happened to my income? I went from making $276,000 that year to the following year, I make four hundred and thirty grand. Why do you think I made almost double the money? You believed in your product. I had always believed, but now it was pa like, now it was, it, was, it was personal to me. Like purpose, bro. Was, that's, that's what I was going to say. The main difference, I think, is there's passion, but what really fuels you and it's, and it's very clear, it's, it's the purpose, bro. Yeah. You have a purpose in what you do. That's why when I sit down with families, bro, it's like, it's, it's very important for me to do the right for what's family, bro. But do right for families and do right for people. Well, I think uh, what we can all take out of these two hours we've been sitting here um, is that, you know, you have to really get behind what you're offering, right? And And you just knocked it on the head right now where... It, it, it's not only your passion, like Adrian said, but it's also your purpose in life, right? Like, I, you saw that scenario and you just figured, like, I'm literally helping people. Yeah. Like, the moment they die, I I was the person who set them up and their family up, you 100%. know? And so, um, with that being said, I mean, I asked you this a little bit earlier, but how is it that you kind of, in a sense, narrowed down what your purpose is? I think that there's different phases, bro. So your purpose starts to change because like right now, my dad's taking care of financially. My mom's taking care of, my kids go to a good school. My wife lives a good life. We have investments. We have the business that pays us passively. If I retire today, you know, I, I still make about over 400 grand a year. If I retire today at 32 years old, res, like residually, I'll make 400 grand. And, and um, so think about this. Like if I work or not, I'm still going to get paid. Right. So my question is like, what drives me to get to the, to the gym? Like, you see me, bro, like, which is sick. I see this guy at the gym. And, bro, I was impressed because you gave me props at the 
peaks the place the other day and then i see you like oh you look bigger i'm like thanks bro and then <laughs> i see at the gym this guy's like oh lift like doing chest i'm like shit I'm like well you're doing good right so i'm looking at but Rick, i was like what gets my ass to the gym in the morning like you know what like right now I, I go i wake up i go to the gym and i take my kids to school and i shower them i get them ready and i drop them off and i go to the office i'm one of the first ones there i'm already making money what so what so is that i already travel i've traveled i'm traveling do i take care of my parents yeah do i like do i give them a lot of money hell yeah do I take care of my wife? Yes. Do I help out my suegros? Yes. Do my kids have a good life? Yes. Do I have a good life? Yes. So do you think now money is still driving me? No, of course no, not. It's, not. it's not the money no more. But you know what's a purpose that I have? Mine is first is like, yo, I want to go. This is one of my purposes. I want to get to the position where all my investments are done and I'm going to go to Mexico. I'm going to live in Mexico and I'm going to preach because I grew up as a Jehovah Witness, which I never mentioned. And I drifted away from the congregation for 11 years. And I didn't serve, I didn't do nothing for the congregation, knowing that these people are teaching Bible truths. And I said, my job as a Christian is to follow Jesus Christ. And all he did was preach. So I'm going to go and preach one day. So my goal is to eventually retire in Mexico. And by the way, I'm leaving to Mexico in October 2025 to go live out there in Michoacan. You're going to move out there? I'm moving out there. Yeah, I'm done. So I'm going out there and I'm going to have another business out there just for fun, not because I need the money to just keep my kids and grow up, teach them habits of work. Um, that's my purpose now, but you know what drives me right now um, is seeing people that were underdogs like myself that were called stupid, that were losers, that work in the fields, that that don't have papers, that are struggling, and I'm like, or or or, or they're doing good, but they hate their job and they're not happy. You know what drives me now? I said, I'm gonna make this guy a badass. Oh, bro, you know what the most beautiful thing it is when you make money. You know what the most beautiful thing now in my position? When you go look at everybody else in your team that's making money. When yeah. you start seeing oh, the lives you change. The lives you change, bro. It's priceless. By some, when you can see somebody's life change. When I, bro, I get excited when somebody makes money. They, I call them like, guess what? They're like, what? They, they, we, it uploads, the updates the same moment of mine and his. They update the same one. Yeah. But I get so excited, bro, to see people make money. You don't even check your stuff no more. You check no, theirs. No, bro, because I'm like, yo, <laughs> I want to see these guys, bro. And I call them like, guess what? They're like, what? I guess like you just I'm getting it. I'm getting paid. I'm like, yeah. Like, did you check how much? And like, no. I'm like, check. Just tell me. I'm like, no, check. Uh I, I'm on my phone. Okay, go to your app, we'll go, go check. Oh crap, what? It's not a lot, bro. But like, I'm making six grand this Friday. Yup. Oh man, bro. Thank you, bro. Hell yeah. But imagine you vested that person, that guy. Remember that baby mama drama sleeping habits, marijuana, uh, drinking uh, borracho and by bucanas and yeah, yeah, my guy, my guy sounds like he's rapping. Right? Right? You know, like, <laughs> like think about that guy becoming a badass, bro. That's what do you think? Yeah. Why do you think all these Grand Cardone, all these guys are now doing podcasts? Because kind of develop a what was the outcome when I sat with you guys? We were like, listen, we want to inspire people to get into business, bro. Like right now, you're not building your real estate agency. You have your business that you're building. Like you're selling. You're also building. You're buying your assets. What the hell is driving you right now? You, you, why are you on these podcasts? Because isn't it, isn't it exciting for you to know that somebody's going to listen to this and eventually start their business and come back to me like, man, bro, I listened to your podcast and it sparked something in me. And thanks to you, bro. Um, it's not a lot, but I'm, you know, I started my business and I, you know, I'm still working at UPS, but I'm making an extra three, four grand a month. Of course. Where's the price on that? There is none. Man, it was, this was fun. This was amazing. We got to make a part two. I told you next time you come, we got to invite your brother. Yeah. That would be great. Um, any, any final thoughts you have to throw out there? Just, Alex? just man, that I'm, I'm, look, man, I'm proud to see Arvin, Arvin, right? Lamont, I guess it's from Lamont too, La and, uh, <laughs> I'm proud to see that, bro. Our parents were born in Mexico. We come to America and their parents used to say, go back to Mexico. Think about that. Go back to Mexico. They used to tell our parents, web back, mojado, beaner. And look where we're at today. Of course. That for me, bro, it's like beautiful. So if you see me on the road, if you see me out and about, uh, maybe I look like an arrogant asshole, but my heart to help people is bigger. And and I'm just proud of the people we're becoming. You're married now. You have your kid, bro. Congrats. And, you know, to see you, how much, how you walk, like a study that Costco guy was walking like he's freaking <laughs> the rock, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> Shoulders back. Just to see the transformation, man, I'm proud, bro. And and I really hope that the, I, I really hope that real estate and insurance can, can collaborate together so we can freaking take over. Kern County is going to be a very, very, it's a gold mine. Kern County is a gold mine. And if we can, everybody can just unite forces, bro, it's game over. 100%. Where can people find you on Instagram? Uh, my Instagram name is Alejandro.dfg. 
uh, BFG stands for Born for Greatness. That's my organization's name. And uh, yeah, you can hit me up on Instagram. I typically respond to all the messages for the most part. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate all the audience taking a listen to this. I know you guys love this episode. So go ahead and share it to all your people. Um, I'm going to take a little a page from Andy Frisella's book because I don't, I'm not, I'm not doing this for anything but to inspire people. So all I ask is the only fee we have for this is just, you know, just share it. Like, Send it, it, subscribe, share. like it, subscribe, or share it, comment, tell us what you guys want to talk about. If you guys want us to keep going, we could have kept going for two more hours. Yeah, so if you guys want uh, Alejandro to come back, let us know. I'm sure he'll make time for us. Absolutely. I appreciate you being here, bro. Uh, Adrian. Alejandro, bro, thank you so much, bro, for coming on. It really speaks for itself why people want to, why people respect you, love you, and, and they really want to be around you, you know, at PHP. So, yeah, man, thank you for the words, and uh, I appreciate it. Wish yeah, you nothing man. but the best. Absolutely. Let's go kill it. Thank you.